It being 6 o'clock, I call the selectmen's meeting to order. Um, are there any changes or additions to the agenda? Yes, there are. Um, we want to, we have to discuss the sale of the trailer and add um, a discussion of the salary changes for the 2023 budget, just what process will be used. Um, I'm also going to add a non-public under RSA 91-A colon 32C session 2. Are there any other changes or additions to the agenda? So we're having two? Yes. Okay. Um, public input? Hearing no public input. Such a good turnout tonight. Um, on to new business. Um, groundwater protection ordinance with the planning board. Yes, and that's Sheldon. It is. Thank you for allowing us to present you the ordinance. I, I know it's a, probably a lot to absorb in a day, but um, the committee has been working for almost a year now. Uh, we've had 12 meetings, and um, a lot of that went into uh, developing a, an education and outreach program, which meant that we contacted every business in town with a letter saying what we were doing and asking for input. Um, we've appeared with our various banners, this banner, and our various stickers, which are great on water bottles. And um, so I'm sure you probably have some questions about it. And I, I'm here to help you in some way. If you want me to give you just a couple of basic essentials, I could do that as well. Do you want to kind of run through what it's about? And the so um, and the why. Why now? OK, so. Um, First of all, Tamworth is one of the only towns besides Albany that doesn't protect the aquifer. And the aquifer is a area that has no, respects no political boundaries. In other words, if, if, if Tamworth, because we don't have an ordinance, should something very unfortunate happen, um, it would affect all the towns around us. So um, basically, the Tamworth Conservation Commission approached the planning board um, in um, May of 2021, and the planning board decided that we finally had uh, room in our schedule to take the time to develop an ordinance, because it does take a lot of time. And so, um, you know, the, the push that happened t um, in 2011 didn't work out and I think the timing now is better because I just think that there's more awareness about the environment. I think people are concerned about that. Uh, it's in our master plan to uh, protect natural resources and so we just felt this was the time to do it. And you know I think the one thing I think you should know the, the ordinance basically um, establishes uh, performance standards for businesses that are storing f over five gallons of regulated substances. Um, uh, private residences are exempt, so it doesn't affect, uh, affect them at all. Businesses that don't store regulated substances are not affected. The only businesses that are affected are within our two districts, which would be the um, businesses over the uh, stratified drift aquifer, and we have a map of that, and also uh, the wellhead protect, uh, protection areas, which are public water supplies. For example, the school, community water systems, um, you know, the town water system. So. Those are essentially our two districts. And, you know, the idea is to, it, it's really preventative because should a spill happen, particularly over the stratified drift aquifer, which is very permeable soils, 
any toxic substance would be would easily drain. I'm sorry, drain into the um, aquifer, and it would be extremely expensive, and um, it, it just it, or impossible to, to clean up. So, it, in in a way, it's cheap insurance, and um, so that's I mean that's that's the essential parts of it. Um, you know, we just feel that you know it, it's. It, it helps the town in, in a liability situation. If something did happen that we have an ordinance in town, it would give the town standing in court. And I think it would um, just generally show goodwill for all our neighboring towns. How does our, um, how does our draft ordinance compare to the other towns surrounding us that, that also have them? So it's... Um, we follow essentially um, the state model ordinance, mm -hmm. and that's sort of another thing that we're we basically are uh, enforcing or using the um, the performance standards that the state already requires. We're not really adding more regulations or requirements. It's just following what the state already. Um, dictates. So our ordinance really follows the state model very closely. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and as such, it's similar, but we don't have zoning, so our process is maybe a little bit different. If there are appeals or are variances, we have a board of adjustment like other towns, but our process would be slightly different just because we don't have zoning. <clears throat> So how is the ordinance, like, enforced? Um, I mean, or is it just kind of for, like, protection purposes if there was some type of, like, chemical spill? So, um, so as, it, as it turns out, the Board of Selectmen, you folks, have a say in how that's done. Um, you can uh, select an agent to be the inspector, for example, but the ordinance doesn't say you must have inspections. The ordinance says you may have inspections. So that is a point of discussion and a point of, uh, you know, what the town or how the town wants to handle that, really. So that's not embedded in the ordinance? It's not, I mean, it's, 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 it's embedded in the ordinance, but, but it's left, the details are left to, to, okay. the, to the Board of Selectmen. The state does have inspections, and essentially what we are, we're, we're really eyes on the ground, local eyes on the ground, because the state, I mean, they're down in Concord, they can't, they don't know really what's going on up here, so the value of the ordinance is, is, is essentially local eyes on the ground. If something comes up, um, those inspections are an educational opportunity. You're dealing with a local person. You're not dealing with someone from Concord, you know. So I think a business would be a lot more amenable or, or a lot more or better received, you know, to have someone from the town talk to them about what they're doing, what they're not doing, and how can we correct a situation which may not be quite right. And what exact what would what are what would be inspected? I mean, what what are what would be look so, um, so if you're if a business is storing over five gallons of a regulated substance, is that like chemicals, fuel? Yeah, the regulated like substances are defined in the um, in the definitions, but basically they're petroleum products and certain solvents. Um, you know, they're, the state has a detailed list, and the ordinance that refers to that. Um, and so the, the, that's, that's I, so it, again, that's the bottom line. I think that um, if, if, if a business has large amounts or larger amounts, like 55 gallons or more, uh, 660 pound weights of dry weight of a regulated substance, then they're going to need to go to the planning board for what's called a conditional use permit. And it's just a little bit more restrictive. They have to come up with a, uh, 
a spill prevention <coughs> control and countermeasure measure plan, which the planning board reviews, which you get to see, see if it's adequate for the purposes. It basically, you know, dictates that, you know, certain, um, you know, configurations have to happen to store things properly away from water. Um, there needs to plan to see what happens and, you know, things have to be labeled properly and sealed and things like that. It, so, um, I remember talking to George Ricker about um, funding that he got for different, like, um, kind of mitigation systems at his junkyard. Um, I don't know if the funding came from DES. Do you remember what he said? I, I wasn't there for that meeting. Oh, that was. Wondering well, anyway, and so what I'm wondering is, like, if, so if you're running a business and this ordinance passes... Uh, is there state or federal money that is available through DES or somewhere else to help small businesses offset the costs of putting in whatever they need to do to be compliant? That's a question that I don't really have enough information to answer. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. But um, there may be. I just don't know. I just can see that there might that. be a financial concern that small businesses would have in, in trying to meet compliance. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, in reality, I think most of the compliance issues would be a one-time expense. Mm -hmm. For example, making sure that there was a roof over where they were storing um, the material, that, mm -hmm. that, that, it, that it was on a concrete, non-porous mm -hmm. surface with a border, if there were any drains, that that was handled properly. It, you know, it, in, in essence, once you're compliant, I think it, it would help the businesses in some ways, too, that, you know, their insurance rates might go down. Mm -hmm. um, they're, you know, they're, they're going to have to comply with the state anyway. So this is, this is an aid that we can, as a town, can offer to them that this, these are ways that we can help you comply. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how, how, I, I'm not sure exactly how they, what kind of assistance or support there would be financially, but um, Cause it, 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 it wouldn't necessarily be onerous. Yeah. I mean, it, it, what, what would be more expensive to the town if, we, if something bad happened? And, and then we were responsible for cleanup. That would be right. truly expensive. I just think yep. that people people think in the immediate time, and if you have to outlay hundreds or a few thousand dollars to put in concrete pads or roof, you know, with the cost yep. for the building cost, it would be great to have that answer, so yep. that okay. so that you can address impressive. people's concerns because they might yep. be all for supporting water, but when you're up against a cost, you would vote no just to protect yourself sure. from that that cost. Yep. So it'd be great to have a that would make sense. Yeah. You know, Thank you. Under the maintenance and inspection session, it does indicate the um, there'll be a Board of Selectmen's designated agent to do inspections, etc. Do you know what other towns, what they use as their designated agent? Is it typically a member of the Board of Selectmen or the Hazardous Waste Coordinator, which is often the fire chief or a staff person in the town yeah. offices? Do you know what other towns you use? Well, I think, I think it's often the health officer. Okay. For that town? So um, most of the surrounding towns have this, like, you, Ossipee, Freedom, Madison. Everybody just yes, yes, yes. Because I'd like to maybe yes, yes, yes. with some of the um, businesses in that area. And see what I mean, typically, I mean, what we, we, we often, I mean, in our research, we, we looked at all the, <laughs> not all, but most of the uh, local uh, towns within the, uh, you know, the um, Lakes region and, Sandwich, um, Ossipies, um, Effingham's. Um, they, they, there's a certain pattern and consistency to them, certainly, mm -hmm. um, but they're all arranged and formatted slightly differently. But ours is pretty much via the state model. It really, you know, as far as all the, uh, you know, the sequence, the sequence and order of things. The proposed ordinance mentions junkyards. And I'm curious, I assume that phrase means one that is licensed as a junkyard. What if somebody's yard looks like a junkyard, but they don't have a license? Are 
they a junkyard or not? Well, if it's a business and it's over the aquifer or within a wellhead protection area, and they're storing more than five gallons of regulated substance, then we get to see what their performance standards really are. So it would be considered a junkyard, whether it's licensed to be one or not? I, don't, I think the name is somewhat... I, I mean, ideally it would be a licensed junkyard, but as you know, um, if, it, if it's a business, um, they would qualify as uh, something that would require um, performance standards. Some of these might not be businesses, but... Some of them are junkyards, and they would qualify as junkyards, but won't be licensed as a junkyard. Right. But well, I think the law applies the same to both. If they're doing business, hmm. they can like like see where it's... Any kind of same. business at all. Yeah. Didn't they do something on... Uh, with the, there was a tire place going to South Tamworth, and they forced them to clean that. That was a health... Every, that was a was health, health, that was health regulation. I, I know there was some kind of ordinance for that. Yes. Oh. Um, what is this ordinance? What is different in this one compared to the one that you said didn't really work out in 2011? Um, it's uh, it's ordered differently, and it's I think it follows the state ordinance a little bit more closely. Um, I don't think there's a grand amount of difference, but it's um, I think it's more logically presented. I think it's one of the best improvements I mean, do you that we think, I don't. I don't know. Do you think that the 2011 didn't go through because people felt it was part of zoning? Another step trying to get to zoning? Well, um, okay. unfortunately, it was, a, it was a controversial time in town. The, the racetrack was going on. Um, there was even a petition to get rid of the planning board. Um, I think that, frankly, there was a lot of misinformation going around because of because because it was a controversial time. Um, I'm just hoping and trusting that the ordinance uh, it will be you know won't won't be misrepresented. That it is what it is. I hope people look at it and read it and understand it. If they have questions, we're here to help. And, and like Leanne mentioned. I think that, I mean, if it's going to be a lot of cost to some of these businesses that are struggling as it is, I mean, we have very few businesses in town as it is to try to add something else to them to have to, the cost of everything else that's, there is to going on right now. Yeah, it sounds, and I don't know a ton about it, but from what you've said and everything, it sounds like a good, I think it's a good thing. My, I would say my issue with it is that it singles out businesses. It's not everyone. I mean, because there's a lot of homeowners and, you know, private people that have fuel tanks that have, mm -hmm. you know, even a gas can might be five mm -hmm. gallons or more. Yeah. Well, so, you know, and um, that's... There are, um, if you look on, under exempt sections, um, things like, you know, your your home home uh, heating tanks and you yeah. know propane tanks and oil tanks and your, your cars and stuff that you know if if there's a uh, a construction project that they were temporarily storing a lot of fuel because they were building stuff all all those type of things that are apt to be in your average home and it, you know on your property they're all exempt from the ordinance okay. it's it's only businesses that are actively you know, in business that deal with regulated substances. Yeah. Okay. Is, uh, is that all you have? Is there any other questions? Um, Just a question, because sure. most of the towns use their zoning officer, not a health officer, to inspect that. I don't know how a health officer would be inspecting for oil okay. and well, stuff. I, I, uh, and I, I understand that that's true in many towns. Um, for example, in Effingham, that's, that's, um, it was, it, it was officer. the zoning officer that caught what was going on over there. I mean, the board could uh, appoint someone to go out and do it that has an understanding yeah. of oil runoff and stuff like that, but not necessarily yeah. are there guidelines under yeah. the health officer's rules. Well, that's a that. good point, but I'm not sure we have a zoning officer. In well, town. no, but they could appoint anyone yeah, yeah, to I go mean, out. That's, that's also the fact. I mean, you have discretion as a board of selectmen to uh, designate an agent. Mm -hmm. 
And the hearing for this is the 14th? Correct. Um, at, at, uh, there's a CIP a public hearing at 6 o'clock at the town mm -hmm. house, and we're 45 minutes after that, because that's what we think it'll last. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that would be at 6.45 again at the townhouse, and that will be available on Zoom as well. Mm -hmm. That's September 14th. September 14th, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. At what time, 6? 6, 6 o'clock for the CIP hearing and oh, 6.45 6 for the GO, GPO hearing. Well, you guys have done a lot of work, so well, thank you for that. You know, we, we try to educate people and let people know what we're doing so it's not a big surprise to mm -hmm. the town and hopefully we're generating some goodwill. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that. Well and you've been you've made a lot of efforts to be public along the way. Mm -hmm. At the we, farmers markets we, and we understand that that's very events. important. Yeah. Yes it is. All right. Yeah thank you for coming thank in you. tonight. Thank you for I appreciate, appreciate it. it very much. Thank you. Uh department head Glenn Johnson with the transfer station. Hello. Well, everything's going well. Oh, my. We're getting, hopefully, the concrete work will be done this month, I hope. If everything goes well, it should be done by the end of the month. But it's repairing the pad. Everything is flowing smooth. They're still fairly busy. The only thing that I would like to Request to be a meeting with the board. Uh, it's be scheduled in on the, with a meeting with the board with Kim and I to discuss the facility permits and things before we order them. We'd like to discuss with the board a chance of making a couple of changes to the way things are done and everything. And I do feel comfortable making any open statements right now without Kim here to. I don't want to say something that she doesn't agree with, and I'm sure she doesn't want to say something I don't agree with. So if we could schedule some meeting at some time <coughs> that's convenient for Kim, I'm convenient any time. Okay. Every, not Wednesday, Saturday, or Sunday, so I'm busy. <laughs> that's <laughs> almost half the week. How are you, you going to get that concrete work done while you're in operation? A big whip. They're going to work hard. <laughs> I have to all put up lights. <laughs> no, they, they think they can get it done in a couple of days. It's only taking out, like, two inches of concrete, putting the bedding in, the anchors, laying the steel, setting around it, and it should be ready to go in 48 hours. Right. If we're lucky. Depending on the weather. So... Right. I'm hoping that's where it'll go. We'll, so we'll know when they start, won't yeah, we? That's right. We'll know how long it takes when they finish. <laughs> so there we are. <laughs> we may have to close for a few days. That's, How's that? That's right. <laughs> Ooh, I don't think that's going to go. <laughs> no, I don't think there'll be happy people happy with that if we do that. Try it. What, you can't be happy? Sunday and Monday would be great. No, we're going to be closed Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday. How's that? <laughs> Thank you for the offer. <laughs> no, I, I think it'll work out okay. Good. So. Is there any questions for Glenn while he's here? We got Gray and Thompson. Who did? I'm sorry. Gray and Thompson. Yeah, good. I'm afraid. Yes. Steel is coming through with your service. <clears throat> is there anything else you'd like to share with us over here? Everything's running pretty smoothly? Yeah, it's running pretty smooth so far. Good. Hope we don't have any major malfunctions, but if we do, oh well. We'll, we'll deal with it. <laughs> but other right. than that, everything's good. And good. with the, the only thing I have now is we've got to get them going soon. Because we start patching them out in the first part of November to the middle of November, so everybody can have them for the first of the year, the tickets, the stickers. So we have to get them in and get them ordered. I've talked with Kim about it a little bit, and I talked with her some tonight. And there's one or two things that bother me, and a couple of things that bother her, and she's the one that gives them out, so we've got to get it ironed out. Okay. All right, so whenever you, as a board, feel that you can. 
Good of Sin, that would be good. Well, Keith, we'll, just ask, yeah, we just ask Kim whatever she... Kim and then... Sure. Yeah. I know she's getting, she's scrambling to get ready for the election. Yeah, I know. You need them by October. Good thing it's a long, busy time of year. <laughs> Between now and the first <laughs> of the year. Oh. We gotta order the ticket. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks, Glenn. Thank you. Thank you Have a good night, Glenn. Thank you. All right. Um, update on Arts Council grant. Are you? I don't know. Do you? Do you I can. You just, you just sure. Um, well, Ed asked for a ninety-one A. Had a ninety-one A on that grant, and I told him it didn't exist. But before I confirmed that with him, I called. Um, the Arts Council director, uh, Max, and in fact, they had written it and submitted it. And there were some um, names that were included in the grant without permission or uh, request, and so we asked that it be rescinded, and it has been. So, that's the update. So Perfect. thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. um, recreation partner discussion? <laughs> Let's see, where do we start? Uh, do you want me to start with soccer to follow up on last week? Then? Yeah, let, why don't you do that? We'll... So Jamie, so I said last week that I'd follow up with Jamie Clean of the uh, Northern New Hampshire Soccer Club. Oh, <laughs> soccer Club. Makes and sense, um, right? Yes. Yeah, so that we... That makes sense. <laughs> Um, we worked out some logistics. Um, the board got forwarded the link to yeah. um, the site with the details. So basically, um, we would be contracting with Northern New Hampshire Soccer Club to provide after school soccer this year for the school age kids, K through six, which is the typical age group that the REC has provided. Um, Jamie and his team are able to provide um, a practice and a game each week for eight weeks, which is a longer season than we had, we've had in the past with rec, same number of days. Um, and um, it would be uh, $115 per kid that we would that would come out of the rec budget and um, including a ball and a shirt. And they get a ball and a shirt, yep. And it would cost ten dollars per child to participate. Um, which is typical again. It's a so so for the kids from the kids point of view, they're not gonna notice really a difference between um, what the scheduling this year other than that they get more weeks of it. Um, and we get like professional quality coaching. So tonight what we need to do is um, we wanted those extra details. So we need to vote to extend the contract to Northern New Hampshire Soccer Club. Um, the one thing that we need to figure out, which is a thing that gets figured out every year, is how the kids um, get. get from the Brett School to Durrell Road. They get walked over. Uh, it's happened different ways any year I've been involved. Sometimes a um, parent would walk the kids over. Sometimes a teacher would. Last year, Dan walked over and got them. Um, that's not part of the agreement that we would have, so we would need to work with the school to find out, to find out how to do that. Um, maybe the I, And just to that point, I know you mentioned school time changed. I don't mind this being an after-school program either. I can be there whenever. I need to be mm -hmm. at the field, mm -hmm. but my insurance doesn't extend over to bringing those yeah. kids from the school to the field. Right. So we really don't want to deal with any of that. Yeah. So. so we just would have to talk to the bread school and coordinate something, and we'll find out what that might look like. Okay. To and I, again, I, I'm here, so I don't mind going down to the school and talking to whoever is going to be doing it. You know, that's not the point. It's like I just yeah. we can't extend that to you guys. The, the physical. Yes, and, and just to that note too, when we say professional coach, it's more important to me, not the coaching of the soccer, more so that the, the, the guys that are coming over, they're all certified through something that's called um, um, Sports Connect. So we actually, they've done, we've done a background check on them. They, they, they're now 
you know, part of my organization where, and we talked a little bit about the volunteer coach, we would hope at some point that a volunteer coach would go through that process as, as well and be what's called safe sports certified. At that point, you then can have them escort kids mm -hmm. from school to somewhere else, but it's something that we provide as an organization too. If, if we find somebody that wants to step up to the plate, we provide that certification. So mm -hmm. kind of important no, okay. yeah. The only other thing that um, I didn't get to see uh, I, I went over once, hoping Tim would be there, and he wasn't there, so I couldn't get into the um, shed to see the to yes. see if Dan did buy new nets. He had said we didn't have them all last season. He said he was going to order them. I don't know if they ever got ordered. Well, well, just to that note, before you do anything, if, would it be okay for me to go over there and just take a look at the, the, the what we got going on? Yeah, absolutely. Because I know I left balls over. I left equipment over there last year as part of a semi agreement that we mm -hmm. had. I can do an inventory of, of everything that's there and then make my suggestions in regards yeah. to what I think, you know, you might need. Because I've, I've noticed, you know, some of the goals are not quite the right size. And with this, for me, it's going to be a long-term project. There's a lot of funds that U.S. soccer will, will funnel into programs like this, but you have to be, you goals have to be a certain size. Your fields have to be a certain size. They bring a, uh, somebody in, take a look at it and say, yeah, there you go, now you can get the funding. Um, you get soccer balls, you can get t-shirts, you get all kinds of stuff. So mm -hmm. if I could go up there, just take a lay of the land, I'll probably go over there tomorrow at some point. Yeah. Um, I have to come back in town for some business, but I'll let you know exactly. Yeah. You know, if they have nets or whatever, I have nets, you know, so don't, if I have stuff, I'll bring it over that we don't use. So that's part of what So, so look so. at the, the nets for the, for the main goals were shredded last yeah. year. We literally bungee corded them and use bailing twine to... See, certain place. referees would walk away from that. You're not allowed, like, again, yeah. it's all part of the process. So look at the nets, look at the nets. check the balls. Yep. The, the, a lot was, um, I think a lot of balls had gotten damaged in the couple of years. I don't know if they froze and the valves blew, but... I bought a bunch in last year from okay. our organization. We donated a bunch last I year. I didn't so get to use them. I know. <laughs> so, okay. anyway, so I'll do all the inventory the stuff and yeah. let you yeah. know. I'll... I'll um, Stay in communication with you about that. Um, yes. Can't they look up in the office if nets have been purchased? Mel seems to know. They yeah. were. And they there were, were balls. Balls. Okay. two different size balls were purchased. Okay. Right. Should be able yeah. to get up on the computer. Okay. The net, he did get the nets at the end of the yeah. year? Well, no, I'm, it was probably yeah, after the year, but there were balls two different sizes purchased okay. and stuff and you should be able to look them up in the office what the amounts were good yep and just check that they got stored so they don't freeze again yes what how big a distance area are you going to mark off around the building construction that's still going on so the children don't get into the building construction that's a good question well, September 15th is when he's supposed to start, so... Yeah. What is there's an issue with the building? There's, there's a lot of construction going on. Okay. And the roof and all that stuff. We could flag <coughs> that area off, I think, pretty easily. Well, somebody should mark it off yeah. so the kids mm -hmm. don't get in there. Yeah. Which means you might have to move, if the porta potty's still there, you might have to move the porta potty away from the building so they don't get in mm -hmm. the building. I'm professional at moving a quarter point. <laughs> you moved one once. <laughs> yes. I, d I do have another question. Online, I noticed that this was already on Jamie's Facebook page or whatever, that it already stated that this was starting September 15th, the times, the everything, and you guys even hadn't even made a decision about it. Was it just premature? I mean, why did it get posted it was with, premature. without you deciding on it? It was premature. We talked last week about getting the final. Yeah, I, I watched that. Yeah. yeah, I think my my I have a WordPress website, so when I build stuff on the back end like I did, yeah. if I hit, you know, I can hit private or post it, it does everything automatic. So when I did it, I don't know, we were talking, what was it, two days ago? I, made, I even made an edit since. So as soon as I make those edits... It goes live. Nobody's seen it other than the people that I've sent the link to. Yeah. So on the Facebook page, again, it should correlate. I think it went live yesterday, perhaps. So, so we can bring it down. I mean, you can make the vote now. We can bring it down. It's not a major issue. Um, well, one 
second. Um, so the what e so what ages is this covering exactly? K through um, five through five. Is that what age, it is? age five. Yeah, I was doing age five so, through twelve. Yeah. 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 Okay, so kindergarten through sixth six grade. Six grade. Yeah. 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 And then the school deals with uh, seventh and eighth. Yeah. Seventh and eighth. Yeah. Sixth, seventh, and eighth. They're doing this year. Oh, okay. Um, they did that last year, but they said they were going to go back to it this year, so they're going to keep doing it. Six, seventh, and eighth. Okay, so you got just probably so they can get a turnout enough for. I wonder if kids can do both. Mm -hmm. that age. Yeah. Um, yeah, they can. We have kids that do <clears throat> both our programs. We do, yeah. you know, we do all age groups. So we go from soup to nuts, you know. Um, but we can, that's why we do it by age. Soccer does it by age. So, so we can we can do, if you wanted it to do, you know, that age group we can. You know, yeah. we can incorporate that into our programming. But this specifically, this one day a week with a scrimmage on the weekends, we call it skills and scrimmages. Is for that K through sixth, which is we call it U twelve, so eleven years mm -hmm. old and under, mm -hmm. and we'll deal with them specifically on the day they're there. We take the groups and we we work with them accordingly. And we don't generally do it by age; we do it by their acumen. So if you're good, you move up, and if you're a little extra, you stay back, kind of a thing. You know. That was a question. One of the questions last week was: Were there separate teams by grade the way Rep did? And it's not the kids all come together, and. Jamie and the team pull them we out. We'll pull them out and make sure that they're in, in the right learning environment for the sport. So the curriculum is basically a curriculum that's been developed for many years through the FA and then now US Soccer is, is, um, is uh, taking it on. So we actually have it as an online curriculum. So again, the, if we can find parent volunteers, they're very easy to learn. But they're age specific and we don't like to get into saying, okay, Six-year-olds only play with six-year-olds. Seven-year-olds only play with seven-year-olds. I have an eight-year-old that plays U13 right now because he's that good. You know, so we don't we don't want to hold those players back, the ones that are, mm -hmm. you know, more advanced. So, but generally speaking, it does work out that it's a you know the, the lesser experienced younger kids play on one team and the older kids with more experienced kids play on the other team. Mm -hmm. That's generally how it, it happens. So. Yep. Last year it was pre-K. Oh, it was pre-K last year. Yeah. Pre-K through fifth grade for skills, skills, fun skills. He had pre-K for fun skills. Mm -hmm. um, and I had talked to Keats today about, we still have a rec department page. You're talking about advertising this. There are a lot of people, we have 1,400 people on an email. If you click email, it will send it off the web page. Mm -hmm. A lot of the parents signed up last year for email notification from the rec page. Oh, good. So if you get the information, we can put it back up on the rec page, and we can send out the email notification so people know about it. Great. Okay. Great. Yeah, that was my next question. Like, has sign-ups gone out, applications for the kids to go out yet, or still in deciding factor? We just let the school know that we're doing something and that we're voting on it tonight and that they'll know tomorrow what the specifics are. And then depending on numbers, is how many coaches we're going to have? And we'll have a, we have three coaches, including myself, that will rotate in every Thursday. So I'll be there actually with two coaches initially, so two of us, where I'll be working with... And R R R Robbie DeComo is going to be the... He runs the whole thing. He, he's, um, he's at UNH right now. He works with the men's team at UNH. So he has the curriculum. He's the one that's developing the curriculum. He's also filming it all. So Robbie is really going to be, you know, a big part of what we're doing. And he'll be here most Thursdays up at the up at the um, up at the rec field. Great opportunity for anybody that likes soccer, to kind of learn as well about what what it would do to to the town if, if we could build a you know a strong soccer program, you know. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Is there any other questions? Yes. Is there a limit as to how many kids can sign up? It's funny you say that. I, you and I were chatting, and, and, and uh, you know, we, we don't want it to be, like, you know, massive turnouts, although, you know, it's open to anybody. I mean, if you have 40 kids on a field at one time, that's about as much as you should, you know, we can manage with two coaches, you know. If we get some adult volunteers, I have, I run sessions for 200 kids over at the NIC, but I have five helpers, you know, so... The answer to the question is it depends on how many people we get to help. So ba basically, though, last year, the kids who came regularly, it was probably about 60 kids. There were 72 maybe or something like that signed up, but you get, you get 
some kids who never showed up once they signed up, you get attrition during season yeah, two. Yeah, you, you have, I mean, having done this for a while, you just have to balance it. You can see who comes the first week, right? Mm -hmm. And then you find them on my dad to tell them, hey, let's, can you deal with that? And then we take, you know, we, we basically want to show them what to do and how to organize the practice. Once you've organized, as long as you have some person that comes and I say be organized there, it's easy to run a large group. But you don't want to run before you can walk. So I'd mention the number 40. I'm open to, you know, more, but I, I would say, I, and again, I don't like capping things, but that would be as good a, an answer as I get, could get to you right now, especially not knowing if, you know, if I had somebody that you said, oh, we found your helper, that mm -hmm. would make it easier for me, you know what I mean, to know how many we could So handle. you mean getting a parent or two to come just to those Thursdays and Saturdays? Yeah, just come to yeah. the Thursdays and Saturdays and just help us out, and after they've helped us out, my idea would be then to have them go run something one day a week, you know, and then you could actually split them. Anyway, we could, I'm not going to go over the details of how I run the program, but what will happen is it will grow from there, if that okay. makes sense. So would the parent volunteer fall under the town's liability or under your liability? I have uh, insurance for volunteers, yes. Okay, so you have them I do. Have, I do have, have because we have yes. one for the town. Once too. they, once they, if they ever get stipend by me, they have to go through the process of becoming No, I just mean we have one, the rec department okay. had a parent volunteer gotcha. form that covered them under town, for town liability, but if you're going to gotcha. sign Find them the okay. under the program, that's the difference. Yeah, we cover, I think I think I have policy for, to, up for a certain would, amount of, of, of volunteers, mm -hmm. or, you know. But. That would make a difference if the school's too busy to walk them over because, no offense, schools are just as short staff now as anybody else. So if they Maybe were under not. the town. So if it's a parent that goes to walk the kids over, then they'd have to sign the parent volunteer mm -hmm. for the rec department so they'd be under the town's liability. Good point. <laughs> Listen, I, I love that. <laughs> yes, it's Is good. Is the paperwork going to be, is the school going to hand it out, or do they have to go on, like, the town's website to... <clears throat> sign up or is it going to be in a packet from through the school yes yeah, and so is it going to ask for volunteers through that package so the parents know that they could volunteer or not i don't do packages to be quite honest everything i've ever done is online you and know. we're going to have to make packages because so many parents don't have access to internet so what i can do but we could get print that well i, I mean well, i don't mind doing that as part of this if we write if we put an agreement together i mean i right. have old letters that i used to write to the town and to the yeah. kids in middle school so i can dig something up and just put something together and hand over the package. It, it, it's not, that's pretty simple. Because really. last year they had packets here and at the school because we have homeschoolers that don't go to the school, gotcha. so they had packets here and on the website. Yeah. So everything was... We can certainly, again... But we can definitely encourage the online because... But it just needs to, I mean, without a rec director for people, they don't know where to go. I just... Yeah, but we're going to communicate, so, I mean, part of what we're going to do is communicate with the school so they clearly know what the avenue is, They've got a good communication mechanism between their PTA page, their newsletter, their teachers. I mean, that's last year for soccer, we had very few kids signed up the first week, and then word started going out it through the school, and it just went. So, there are good communication tools in place. That, mm -hmm. I mean, Brett does a nice job with that. So that doesn't address the homeschoolers, no. but we can also use well, the page and the page and, the page page and, and send out the email yeah. alerts because you'd be surprised how many grandmothers say to their grandkids, hey, there's a soccer program Even going on. Even flyers at the, the post email. offices or something. Mm -hmm. And I can make those up for you, Leanne. That's uh, not an issue at all. And anything you send for forms or whatever to Keats, she can just send them to me and we can post them right up on the web page so they can click and get the same packet that you would have available That's great. elsewhere. You can put my link there too, it's already up on it's my all link. There. It's all there with, with everything that they need. And we did mention to, to Leanne, which is, a, which is quite important, is the payment option. You said, would I be able right. to take cash or check? I don't want to, again, I, it, it's easier to track if they, if they pay online and yeah. it also comes into my CDM so I, I see everything. Now, I know this, you, you said that that may be an issue at some point. It's not insurmountable. You know, if you, I don't know if there's a way to, you know, put it somewhere and then transfer it through a debit card or something like that. I, I, I don't always, know. But. They'd always send their payment to the town office before. Or the, the school. rec department box. No, they didn't take it at the school. It all came into the rec department box here in the office. But they were checks. No, no, all came in. No. Check. I mean, I just know we were taking $10 bills right and left at the field last yeah, year. So, they have, so, I mean, try it and see if, and 
See, I the know. thing is, I'll need their email address, the communication, so that I'm writing email addresses down. Like, if you go online, you just sign it up. There's your email. Yeah. Boom, it comes into my CDM. I, I communicate with everybody, and everybody sees everything. <clears throat> You know, and there is no need for leaflets or pamphlets or, or any of that really yeah. at the end of the day. And then you can just link it to whatever website you want to link it to. It's not. But my point being is if I start taking $10 bills here and a $10 no, check know, here, and you guys and ask me how many $10 bills did you take at the, the, the rag department? I've got, I've got a couple in my pocket here. <laughs> well, but if every, I could bring an iPad with me and we could just have them sign up that way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I have access to the website. I can bring a laptop. Well, with that's me, great. If you, you could know? do it that way, that would solve some problems. I just know that one of the things that has come up with working with kind of a big chunk of families is it just internet access, having a credit card, ha having, credit card having computer at home, you know. Yeah. Phones are easier. They could do it on their phone. But if you had somebody there at the field and, and you show up and when they pick you up, you fill them in, that's... I do. I have an iPad. Yeah. I can put it on a stand and I can lock good. people in that Happy way. It's media. fairly easy. You know, yeah. fairly easy to do. It's just to get, I mean, you know, it's just a, iPad, you know, hopefully yeah. everybody can use an iPad by now. You may have to open the office up for him to do that because I don't think the internet that's out there. I can just use my, I'll just have a mobile hotspot. Okay. I do it all the time. So I was so. going to say, the hotspot out there doesn't work beyond the office it's itself. Yeah. But I have it on my phone, I'll just, yeah. I'll just, okay. you know. Well, I'm, just, I'm just saying that's. Very, no, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. Yep. All right. Um, I guess, is there any other, any other questions, comments? Hearing none, um, I make a motion correct, to... I'm going to correct the number. So that's 125 a person. Jamie's collecting the 10, so what we're paying is 115. Mm -hmm. So correct. just to be clear, the town is paying 115 a person, you're collecting the 10. Correct. Do you want to make a motion, then? 115. You want me to make it? Yeah. Motion? Uh, I make a motion to contract um, soccer for... The five to twelve-year-olds with Northern New Hampshire Soccer Club paying one hundred and fifteen dollars per child for their eight-week season for Thursdays and Saturdays. That's enough of the deal. Second. Discussion. Do you not want to include what the child is paying in that motion and how it's going and, to the town? And the the, the $10 isn't... I think we're talking about the contract with the contractor. So that he's collecting your $10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's collecting my $10. He's collecting his $10. <laughs> he's getting the 125 So he's getting the 125 so you're going to pay the 115 right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. clarification. Yep. That's mm -hmm. where I was confused. <laughs> it's been seconded. Any other discussion amongst the board? No. Hearing none, roll call vote. You said yes. Barry, yes. Prentice, yes. Roberts, yes. Four, yes. Zero, no. Well, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. And we as a club are excited to be a part of it. So, no, no, you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for coming in. Yes, absolutely. You don't want to stay for the rest? <laughs> <laughs> I got to get other business. <laughs> Take care, guys. Thank you. <laughs> um, is there. What are we on to now? Um, the doors. Is there any other discussion of besides soccer for forward? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. We're yeah, still on this recreation discussion. Still on there. Um, so we do want to we do want to have a vibrant recreation program and hire a recreation director. The uh, job description may be changing slightly because uh, there are so many opportunities for recreation in town already that aren't offered by the town of Tangley. Uh, that part of the job is going to be uh, coordinating and making it, making it clear. Well, I mean, this work was done by one of the study groups about all the programs that were available, who was doing them, what days. That needs to be updated. So it would be a continuation of that. Uh, part of the job would be a continuation of that and keeping that updated as to all the different things that are going on. So we're, we're hoping to you know, cover the basics to start as far as sports goes, you know, soccer, got that covered right now, basketball this winter, and pickleball or whatever else uh, we come up with, but um, 
what we hire is going to be doing coordination almost as, it doesn't have to be some athletic coach to get the job is my point you know it could be someone with great coordination skills and uh, also doing some coaching probably but uh, anyway that's sort of the direction where we're headed so has there been a decision was there a decision made at the last meeting no, to we just started talking about it. Yeah. As, and are we, were you guys thinking a full-time position? Well, thinking? we're sort of open to uh, suggestions, really. I mean, um, if someone were to come forward and say that they thought they could do this, what we're hoping for part-time, then we would be open to listening to their presentation. But if, uh, if no one thinks he can do it part-time and it needs to be a full-time job, then we will be open to listening to that discussion too. So, um, so are we going to post it as a, if we post it, are we going to post it as a part-time or a full-time? The recommendation in the, um, I don't remember what the year was. When the first or Barb, second one? The second one, Barb Bloomberg, Amy Carter. Well, it was also in the first one that all coordination of all activities in town needed to be corrected. So that was last, last year with Kelly. So it was last year. So, so, so the job description said, you know, for the pay was like thirty to fifty thousand dollars. And I don't know if you were thinking you'd pay it thirty thousand dollars to a full time job. I don't know what that meant, but it it looks like if you keep within that same job description that was or, that's already been created, which is really pretty thorough, you could have somebody come in and offer to do part-time. You could offer, somebody could come in and say full-time. Uh, somebody in town asked if they could do it with a, if two people could do it, work together and do it each part-time. I mean, I think we, to get the right person, somebody who's really going to make a vibrant program, we should just keep an open mind about what the possibility is. Post the job description that's been created. Without posting it full-time or part-time? Well, I think you'd... Or you can post the, the salary range. From thirty to 50000 or is that a full... Are we thinking thirty thousand as a part-time job? I don't know. I might I apply know. for it. <laughs> <laughs> Hired. So, I guess the question came up, it, or as you said, if somebody comes in here and gives you a proposal of what they can perform. Yeah. yeah. I think the the holdup on a rec director in this town has been the, the majority of if you don't play sports, you can't be a rec director. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's, that's not true. That's not right. true. There's so much more to recreation than than right. soccer and basketball, baseball. Yes. So. We try. Yeah, we, we tried to enforce that, know. but <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, the but, type well, of people that come but out. if you're open to someone bringing you a presentation, I've had a couple people ask me what they're doing, and they've yeah. been waiting to see the job yeah. description yeah. before. Yeah. It, so as long as they don't have to coach baseball, right. you know, if they're not proficient well, in what, baseball, basketball, yeah. and all this, they yeah. don't want to coach, but they yeah. think they can run a right. So what Carl was saying, tweaking the job description. So one tweak that I would make looking at it is the qualification section. It said, you know, I, I don't remember what the title is, but like recreate your college degree with a recreational leisure sports degree, a phys ed degree. Like those are the ones right off the bat. And really... Um, you could have somebody who can coordinate and you find the people who are the good coaches, you know, you, you are somebody who can get a lot of volunteers, you know, um, and not have to be that person who knows how to ref softball. Linda? Uh, I think you can't really go on how much you're going to pay until you know, I mean, do they need a degree in, in phys ed, you know, or, or you know, a, a rec director like the last one, or if you're going to just get... But I mean, if you're going to turn around and hire somebody to coordinate, then you're going to pay a company to teach each sport. You're yeah. going to spend a lot of money doing that, so you need to not pay them as much. You know, I mean, right. you, you, you well, can't. The, the budget, yeah, the rec, rec, um, recreation budget might be changed. The salary for the director might not be that different. But if, you know, if we're paying have... Jamie $125 uh, to, to do that job, that's coming from the per child. But but the, the, yeah, but yeah. I mean but then, then you know your coordinator has contacted him and he doesn't have anything to do with it after right. that. So I mean you're paying somebody else. But if you're going to pay somebody to teach each sport, you don't need to pay your coordinator that much. I mean and they right right. You know, and that's why it might be. That's why it's possibly education. possibly it's going to be a part time job. We don't. Right. Well, and that person would also have to. Um, that person would also have a budget that they're working under, right? So 
you, but there's a lot to look into this, not just, I yeah. mean, you can't just you, throw them out, out there because, I mean, if they're going to, if they don't need that college education of four years of being a rec director yeah. or something. Can and I just interject, the, um, there's a request from Zoom attendees if the people in the, um, who are speaking and identify themselves. Linda oh. Cook. But it's just, I mean, I just think that, I mean, I, I'm all for part-time because what, when we had a full-time before the last one, I mean, most of his, a lot of his jobs on his job, you know, wasn't this last rec guy's job. Right, And I right, mean, right. it's like, so I really don't see that. And then if you're going to be the coordinator, I don't see that it could really be a full time if well, you're going to hire could, other people. You know, it's all, sports. we just don't know how it's going to develop, but mm -hmm. uh, it's possible this person would be coaching a sport uh, of some sort. So maybe would we be asking for like a it's hard to know what proposal? As to, you know, do we put out a range of pay? Do we put out well, I don't maybe part-time, maybe full-time? I mean, I mean, I guess it could be hourly, and then if they build approved programs. Yeah, I mean, maybe we're looking for... You can always advertise it as part-time with the potential of going to full-time. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe if we get somebody in that we're really... And they can prove to you prove. that they can... Do what we're looking for. Finds and programs for the whole the town. Yeah. We can always Maybe that's where doesn't... presenting some kind of plan comes in. Yeah. Yeah, they present a, because before we asked to have an entire rec department yeah. five year plan written, and mm -hmm. twice now we requested that. I know. And we've never gotten it. Mm -hmm. So whoever's coming in, that should, if they were really interested in the job, they could at least present you with a one year presentation of. This is what I think I can do in a year and mm -hmm. go from there. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is Maureen. Oh. May I make oh, a sorry, comment? Yeah. Yes, Maureen. Thank you. Um, my thought is it was very painful to all of you, I know, to have to make the book part go. Um, and my thought is that it would be something you should consider. Can you assure the next recreation director that there would be X months of stable income, uh, and then the name? I see. I see you raising, shaking your head, Becky, and I respect that. Um, I, <laughs> it's very, very painful to you, I know, and it was painful as a citizen to watch someone be let go like that. Yeah, I think unfortunately that you don't really know. I mean, some people look really great, you know, and then, you know, they don't, it's, it's hard to tell if somebody's going to work for a position or not until they do the position, until they work the job. I think and that's the case with just about any type of employment there is. Um, some people are so do, our, do, our, do our contracts include probationary period? Yes. Yes, yeah. they do. Yep. Yes. Okay. So, so Maureen, this is Leanne. Um, one thing that we've talked about too, um, as a board, is what we could have done better as uh, mentors to a new employee. So, while we maybe can't assure somebody that they unconditionally have a guaranteed period of employment, we could do a better job. Um, working with someone to make sure that they are settled, they understand resources that they have available, they have somebody, you know, especially the rec department, um, you know, that's a solitary position. Like, you work with a lot of little people, a lot of people a little bit, as, as opposed to having, like, a team you work with every day. So just making that contact regularly so that that person has a sounding board, too. Um, it's something something we want to have in place. I would say also that it takes a very particular person to work, a, like a, make their own department and work alone in that mm -hmm. department. I know that they work with people and stuff, but you know you're it you're mm -hmm. your own motivator, Needs so to speak. Yeah, so it takes it takes a certain person to fill that role. I think um, so that also makes it a little bit challenging, but. Yes, I agree. Well, thank you. Thank you. I really do appreciate your comments, and I know it's tough. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Is there a... Uh, yes? Melanie Strita. Um, the library did three listening sessions with the rec department, 
to go over it was like with kids, sports, and I think adults. I don't know if you ever happened to see the results of that, but there were there were some. Did they? Uh, they were all public yeah, listening library. sessions. Yep. But I mean, where are those results available? At, um, the at the library. Oh, at the library. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And there was two committees. Have you all read? Yeah, we've read have you read yeah, both, both all, all yeah. the whole yeah. things on all those yeah. Yeah. committees? Cause, yeah. yeah, it was a lot of good work. Uh, I, I think it comes down to what Emily just said, which is that it's a it's a solitary job where you have to have a certain skill set and a certain disposition. And I mean, I think that people who met Dan really liked Dan. He was a like likable guy. He you know was outgoing in certain ways, but in the other bits just were not his strengths. It's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. lot. Yep. So it's managing a business. Yeah. And that's why I say you might be better off to start unless somebody gives you a really good presentation with a lot of thought forethought of building you a plan so that you can see a year plan yeah. ahead of time. Yeah. And if you see somebody that says, I can build you this in a year then you may say, okay, this is a full-time person because you're already seeing the motivation. Right. And right. I think also, unfortunately, this is one of the toughest times ever to find the right people for yeah. jobs. Um, you know, it's a very, very tough time to be looking for help. Um, That's why I kind of like that idea of the, and I can't even remember who it is, it was an offhand comment about people doing the job together. I think that's mm -hmm. kind of an interesting way to go about it. Maybe somebody doesn't want a full-time job and... Yeah. And wasn't there a mention, though, a few weeks ago when people were in here for a rep that the school doesn't have a... Athletic director. Athletic director. Athletic director. Yeah, no. I, do they, I don't know if they... They didn't have one last fall. I don't know if they ever found that one. That got really muddy. Yes. Yeah. When, when the rec director was the athletic director for the school, that was oh, extremely I'm not muddy. No, no, but I mean, yeah. they don't have one. So, I mean, yeah. you know, it's... Yeah. Yes. One other comment. I just... Melanie, through here again. One of the things with the rec department this time, the programs would start out like games at the townhouse. Mm -hmm. And it'd start out with like five people the first week, and the next week nobody would show up. Yeah. So it wasn't always the rec department was the issue. It was like nobody went to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so you yeah. can't lay the blame on the rec director all the time. It's no. this, right. if people, you know, and... It was a gung ho idea, and then it just. Yeah. 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 Well, and the tricky well, thing, too, is that, like, reading the two reports um, with the surveys of what people wanted in town, you know. And they wanted everything. They wanted. So, you know, but people wanted yoga. It's like, do you know how many people are doing yoga right now right. in town? And. And even if the, if Rex subsidize it, the people aren't charging that much for yoga. So the town doesn't need to offer yoga because you can get yoga from five people in Tamworth. So but you need to have an advertising. But you need to have an advertising. People is. don't know that it's there. Well, exactly. That's going to be a big part well, of the Becky, job. I'm going to say, Becky Mason, the one thing we wanted, I hate to call it this, but this is what it is, is the town of Tamworth social calendar. Because yes. that is what it yes. is. And yes. the rec department page has a calendar on it, and we thought you could build it there, yeah. and it just never transpired. Right. Mm -hmm. got but but it, there's so much going ways, on in town. Enough Put different there. ways yeah. to get the word out. That's going to be yeah. the... And again, like, the rec department can send out an email for anything they post. So if they do a social calendar of all events, yeah. you hit email to your patrons, and it shoots out through email. And it's posted like at every post office every month. It changes so people know what's going on each right, month, right. each it's, day it's of the week. keeping up with it. Because we, I hate to say it, we used to have the uh, paper here in town. I can't remember. Civic, 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 Civic News. That had all the social events listed yeah. and all the meeting events listed and stuff. Yeah. Everybody's gone electronic, so make a social calendar. Well, yeah. Emily's working on the sort of meeting calendar of the town. So that Maybe. could be, yeah. Well, and that's what I say. It'd be nice to see where it is, what time it is, mm -hmm. what age groups it's related to, and that's what originally the rec calendar was supposed mm -hmm. to develop And what into. other programs in town are happening, well, like the yogas and, exactly. you know, so can we look at the, can we, as a board, um, this week, go back to the, um, the job description that's there, make our tweaks, come next week with the tweaks that we feel like need to be made so we can vote on a job description next week? Yep. 
Especially the qualifications, right? Because yeah. the minute you put something in regarding rec or something like that, you've deleted in yeah. a, a lot of people that might be willing to come yeah. forward. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree. All right. Is there anything else to, about the rec department? From birth to death. <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, well, we're moving on to uh, maintenance work to be done, um, the town office doors. Mm -hmm. So you all received a copy of the bid on the glass doors that the board voted on last year. Mm -hmm. um, that bid is, is it 15, it's 15,030, wait, where's the total? Um, and then we have to add on, we just got the bid today for the keypads. Mm -hmm. well, how much was that total though you just said? Oh, hang on one sec. So the keypads are 3,431. And I just don't know if this is an old bid because I thought it was 17, but this, that's July 12th. For the above, like 50, just let me hang on. Let me just go. Thank you. This is the one he gave us that we looked at before. Yeah. I just thought it was 17, but maybe... You're probably thinking of this being 17. No. Okay, so. Okay, so the July 12th proposal is 15,030. And then you have to add, add on the keypad. the keypad doors. Of three which what? is three thousand four hundred thirty-one dollars and forty-eight cents. Three thousand four hundred thirty-one. And what was the cents? Uh, forty-eight. And what we'd like to do is get this under contract and scheduled before <coughs> Tim goes at the end of September. Mm -hmm. well, that's going to be a hard position to fill. Well, he's amazing. That's the next discussion. I know. Oh. Uh, I make a motion to. So what was in the budget for that, though? Uh, there's 20, at least 25 in the yeah. budget. This is fully covered. I make a motion to expend $18,462 for. That was $61. In change. I'm just rounding up for the change. Uh, Sixty-one dollars and forty-eight cents, give or take, um, <laughs> to have the town office doors with keypads replaced. Second. Any discussion? Questions? Hearing none. Roll call vote. You say yes. Fair yes. Precious yes. Roberts yes. Four yes. Zero no. We will be having new doors with new keypads. Um. Townhouse fire escape update. Um. You went over with Tim, right? Yes. And Melanie and Linda. I'm sorry. I found the 2500 Okay. My apologies. There is, we had a second proposal that added 2500 to make the doors handicap accessible. Oh. And that was the difference. So. Um, so 2500 even? Yep. Incremental so that, so that people can push a button and the doors yeah. open. Yeah. And the back. 900. Still under budget. Yeah. Forty. You're still under budget. <coughs> so do you want to okay, rescind that vote? My right. Apologies. I make a motion to expend twenty thousand nine hundred and sixty one dollars and forty eight cents to replace the doors and keypads for the town offices. Second. Any discussion? Questions? Hearing none, roll call vote. Say yes. 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 Roberts, yes. Four, yes. Zero, no. Uh, okay. Now we will have new doors and keep that. So, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. That's cool. Yes. yes. So, uh, the fire escape. Yeah, yeah, so, as Tim um, started taking rotten boards off the fire escape to see what needed to be done, it turned into quite a bit bigger job than anticipated, mm -hmm. uh, and he really felt he wasn't up to the job. Uh, you know, some posts, uh, a major post at the bottom of the stairs is rotten, mm -hmm. so it's sort of, you've got to prop the roof up and replace the post, and uh, it's getting kind of involved, and 
So, uh, in the discussion we had over there on site, um, we had uh, an idea to get rid of those wooden stairs because they seem to be collecting snow and rotting and maybe just have an old-fashioned metal fire escape uh, which would shed the snow and ice fairly easily and wouldn't rot. <laughs> so, uh, Tim was going to look into uh, pre-built ones so you can just tell them the specifications and, and they build it to specs and send it to you. And then also, uh, who, who contacted, did you, did you contact a yeah. uh, uh, metal fabricator over on, on Maple Road, Gosh Ange? Oh, yeah. Um, and so he was going to come up with a proposal oh, for, for building them on site. Pretty cool if we could keep it local if the price yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. If it was well, prices, is it right? another company? Well, you know, it's G O S H A N G E. Yeah. But I believe those are. Is it two, two words? words. <coughs> it's no, two it's words. Word. Two it's one word. Word. It's one word. I thought it was. Oh, okay. now you got me. Yeah. I'm thinking of the sign in my head. Right. <laughs> I think it's two. Anyway, um, so those are the two uh, proposals that we're looking into. And uh, when we get prices, then we'll make a decision. In the short term, well, I mean, depending on the timetable for uh, an entirely new fire escape, it may be necessary to do some repair work on the existing one. Yeah. So, uh, it's one word. <laughs> <laughs> the A is capital, so I don't know that word. I think it's one word, though. How, what's the regularity of use on the second floor? These days, um, you have to shut it down if you don't have a fire escape. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Like, like how, how much? Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. So it's getting regular use. Oh, yeah. And then um, so the contra dances. Contra dances. Yeah. Does get regular use. Yeah. And it's the fire escape is. I mean, if that it's fire not. Is it, yeah, it's not completely no, no. broken. No. The stairs are good. It's really the the railing and the roof uh, support more that's that's starting to show. Rot. Is it from? Obviously, snow. Snow rain. Rain. It's it's wind rot. It's rot. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it was a good design. So you think it's still safe now for use? It's safe to use. Okay. <laughs> you seem confident. So. I say. Yeah. <laughs> it's one word. We could get it. We could get an engineer in there. A N G E L L C. Okay. Do you get that, kids? Um. Yes. Hi, Linda Cook. Um. Another suggestion I had is that when, well, we've had the maintenance guy the last couple of years try to shovel that, keep it shoveled all winter. But you have three roofs going into the bottom mm -hmm. of the steps. Yeah. And my idea is that if we put a new metal one in, that it goes the opposite direction away from those three mm -hmm. roofs. So it's going out the back of the building. And if you swapped a window and a door upstairs, and then it wouldn't, the sun would be beating on it so that it would, you know, melt quicker. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you aren't going in to, like, because it's corner. the brick, yeah. and that, the brick yeah. of the safe thing, you know, and I mean the vault, whatever it is. But I mean, it's it's always, the snow's always yeah. catching. You know, you have three roofs going into where the exit is, you mm -hmm. know, the bottom of the exit. Yeah. I meant to look Five, inside, six. after you said that, I wanted to go upstairs it's and look good. at that, see how much of a project. To swap those. To, it would be to swap those. I mean, I. I sort of picture a fairly ornate trim, like chair rail height trim going around. Well, there's the a, like a bench, there's a bench, bench but I mean, obviously it's bench, it was cut no, to put the door in. I don't in. know what I'm picturing then. <laughs> Maybe it would be easy. To go up, to, yeah. I'll go up and take a look. Yeah, but. Yeah, yeah. And in speaking with Georgie from Maple Road there, he did say it didn't matter which, which way, way which it way went, I'm you know. For him. For him, yeah. the price would be yeah. the same. We'd just have to uh, pour a concrete pad. Right. Yeah. 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 He would. Bottom. He said that the town would have to be responsible for right. that, and you know, and even maybe removing it. Oh, getting rid of the old one. Yeah. 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 Hmm. The other question I have is: right now, there's fifteen thousand dollars in the budget over there. Repair maintenance. Right. For repair yeah. and maintenance. Oh, it's that's going to go for the windows. Well, three thousand. We, 3000 okay. that we have for window repair that we encumbered for next year. I, I think yeah. it will be more. No, we can. 
We than 12,000, probably. What? You haven't encumbered it yet. Oh, we haven't? Oh, no, no, you don't encumber do until December. You don't do that until December. <laughs> but okay. there would be $12,000 left. Yeah. You know, if there's some way that if this comes in and... I don't. I think it will be more than twelve thousand. Yeah. The whole project. Yeah. But if there's more money that we could encumber, yeah. You know, get a contract for it now so it can be encumbered. That twelve can be encumbered. Right. Right. But I think that the metal would be a lot less upkeep. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not going to yeah. rot. I you don't know. think it would be even a lot more expensive at this point than rebuilding the wood one. Would it? I mean, well, to rebuild, you could repair the the, the existing one. Um, if you were just replacing bad parts, you could probably do it for a few thousand dollars. But uh, then but we're going to run into issues down the road. I think it's going to yeah. happen again because it's not a great design. Yeah, the metal one should last for right. a long time, a long especially time. if it's kept up yeah. a little bit. So where the snow falls right now at the bottom, so if you had to come down that fire escape, you have to go over a mountain of snow to well, get on it? Well, it's supposed to be shoveled each storm, but the problem is the snow comes off three roofs. Right. And That's sometimes it. when they shovel, the snow hasn't... Slid yet, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Hmm. But I mean, you think too. I mean, the the furnace is in that corner. The kitchen is in that corner. You know, I mean, and if there's a fire and the stairs are going to burn, you know, I mean, corner, it's right? like in well, that corner. It's and they like have to put a piece of uh, plywood over the window. Yeah, yeah at the, the bottom winter. of the stairs. Yeah, for the winter. Because the snow comes <laughs> off and will break the window, so this has to have a plywood on that. Window. Yeah, because it slides. Yeah. Could be design time. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of prices we right. get for this. So he's going to send Tim some prices. Great. Yeah. yeah. Great. And Tim has that on his list before he goes. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, I guess we're on to the maintenance position discussion. Anybody want to lead off with that? Well, in reading the job description, um, I mean, Tim has been great. By the way, we're going to really Phenomenal. miss him. It's yeah. just, it's got a great work ethic. Uh, it's just perfect for the job. Multi talented. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't realize until we actually came onto this that I had to read the job description. There's quite a lot of janitorial work as well as exterior repair and maintenance work. And I'm wondering if, I mean, we're, as I say, we're lucky to find Tim, but are we going to find someone who's going to do both? You know, if you find a handyman, is he going to be great at repairing and painting and mowing grass, but has no interest in cleaning bathrooms and polishing floors? I don't know. The janitorial work, as it was written, sounded like a full-time job. Yeah, so not I that think... many buildings, though. No, no. It, it's... But if it's waxing and polishing floors and washing walls, which I, which Very hardly ever short. gets done. But, but, but he's only, but the only floor he's doing that in is, is yes. here. Is here. Well, it turns out that the police department has been doing their own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and he doesn't do but, the fire departments, I don't believe. He went down to the fire departments a couple times. I don't think he sweeps the floor at the highway department. <laughs> well, on, on paper he does, so and that's why it's not accurate. Yeah, yeah. So it needs we, to be more accurate. To, we have to tweak the job description. And did you? Go over that with Tim, or do we still? We've need... we've had conversations about the job, but we haven't gone over the job description yeah. specifically. So he was saying, you know, somebody with as a maintenance man that that was the kind of job set of skills that yeah. you know it's kind of different than a handyman. It's different than a janitor. It's mm -hmm. so he didn't balk at that uh, the combination. No. Yep. no, but that's him. You know, who knows? Well, yes yeah. and no, because we had also taken that from like schools that have their maintenance department yeah. and, and stuff. It's not just custodial anymore. It's right. a maintenance department where they're outside cutting and mm -hmm. and to make sure it was maintainable for a full time position. Right. Well that's true. We actually started, you know, Mary borrows him and then offsets it out of her budget, pays back to the town for his services yeah. and stuff. So and it took up the snow shoveler that we used to have that oh, we yeah. didn't have anymore. Mm -hmm. So it was to maintain it, so it was a 40-hour so position, yeah. Job. Yeah. because we sense. never figured we'd find anybody for two part-time positions. Yeah, right, right. right. Yeah. Well, that's sense. a good point, that to give a full-time job, you do have to combine it's, all this. It's the big stuff, like the floors. I mean, he did the bathroom floors at the townhouse, didn't he? He also replaced some tile out here. Yeah, yeah. and it's 
<clears throat> those aren't things that you do all the time, but yeah. they hadn't been done here in, yeah. I think, 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> so he did so much in a year. Yeah. But I mean, like, I mean, like, he doesn't, they don't clean the townhouse. No. I mean, we yeah. volunteer to do all that. So, I mean, that building, yes, is maintenance to do outside and stuff, but I mean, he, he was also he was yeah. pretty good at letting us know if there was a project that was kind of over his head as well, which well, is important um, is so that somebody doesn't get in and yeah. kind of get themselves in trouble, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, once they get but in. I mean, like, like I don't know that if it's fire department, you really want him to do a whole lot because I mean, like, in front of Chicago Fire Station, there's grass in front of the door two feet tall. You know, but I mean, if the fire department doesn't really want him to take care of that building, or what, I don't know. He but I mean, like the, the door police, of the yeah, I mean, they did that. <coughs> much complaining. I think the police yeah, department sure. is like, um, I don't know that he that he can go in to just the whole de building. You know what I mean? They yeah. have closed locked doors. The point of it is, it was offered. It's like mm -hmm. because at that point they didn't have paid volunteers. So when the grass right. got up three and a half feet tall in Chicago, and that's something you're seeing as you're driving down, mm -hmm. and the pink. Fire door, which I yeah. fought for three years. Yeah. I asked him to go up. They finally gave him permission. He, he cut the grass and painted the door. Yeah. So he's available. He, he was to willing the to do it all, but some departments mm -hmm. may not want it. So anymore. do we not need to tweak it? Should we just vote on the job description so we can post it? What? Did, I mean, what is everybody? What you, what's the? What was the thought? That was the job description that got him, right? Yeah. Yeah. My fear was it. It. The. The harder stuff is the carpentry and repairs, not washing floors. It seemed, it sounded much more janitorial than I think the job he does. So you're day. saying you want to emphasize the harder stuff yep. because anybody can wash the floor, really? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I would have moved the carpentry up, up at least up one notch, and, and yeah. the janitorial stuff down one notch at the very least. When we put when we put this out originally, what was the what was the pay range when we put this out originally? Mm -hmm. I, think I should know this to, as well. I think it was so. 20 to 25 I don't know, actually, I, I was here when we hired him, but I wasn't here when the job was... I think it was 20 to 25 an hour. 20 to 25 an hour. And we adjusted that based on use of their own tools, use of their own vehicle. Right. Yeah, he's driving his truck. Yeah, I mean, I think that's... she did say was the biggest so, problem with the job. <coughs> yeah. One of the problems. Did you get, the, did you get mileage? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But I don't know if... The board has accepted the new <coughs> mileage of the IRS yet. I know. Because what the old mileage is is 16 cents, 17 cents less than what the new IRS rate is. Oh, okay. I believe That's we're using the current IRS rate, but are you saying it changed recently? Uh, it's up to 60 something cents oh, well, a mile, I think. Yeah, 64, yeah. and the board has to approve that to be okay. able to use it. Okay. I think we're at 50 something. Yeah. About 58. Yeah. And the hopes was eventually with all these vehicles that were coming up Something from other come departments up, right? that yeah. one would yeah. Come, yeah. To come to the maintenance department. So well, they I mean, like there's one, one at the police vehicle. department, they have two employees and we have three cars. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then the tool-wise, it was a process of over time, you would be able to build up. I mean, we did get the snowblower, we did get, you know, some things that he needed, like the ladder and stuff like that. But over time, mm -hmm. what he couldn't get from the highway <coughs> department, he was so... Slowly build up, accumulating some. Yeah. There's still money in the budget to call the tool, but right, so we've added money this year. There wasn't originally. So a person could go out and buy the certain pal tool sets they need and mm -hmm. things like that. So, so do we, does it does the job description need tweaking? Do we think, or can it still go out as is, other than the tweak of emphasizing the more mm -hmm. skill part, yeah. the specialized skills. And, and if nobody's ever polishing or waxing the floors, then it should be taken out. Oh, they, they are. are. Actually yeah. polishing and waxing? Yes, okay. he did both. First thing I've never done that, I didn't know it still worked. The man still has the yeah. shine on the cleaning part of the floor. Well, <laughs> well, he never saw the floor before. I think Richard's point is know, yeah. that, yeah. Yeah. that you want to emphasize the... Yes. the, the yeah. Just swap yeah. number two and three or whatever that was. Yeah. And probably the hourly rate has to go up from a year ago. Or whenever we hired him. I think we ago. could. Well, twenty to twenty-five. I mean, I think we have people at the highway department that have been there for quite a while that aren't making twenty-five dollars an hour. So, might, so it's still within a range. I think for town. that yeah. we might try it at twenty twenty-five. Yeah. See yeah. what we have yeah. turn out, and then we can. You can always go up. It's hard go to go down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think twenty to twenty twenty might 
be low, but 25 for is that's pretty that's up there pretty well, yep. I think, um, mm -hmm. for this position. But and it's, well, a full -time it's a hard time. Position. Yep. Things mm -hmm. have gone up, and it's a hard time to find help. So I think we maybe we want to put it out and then see what happens. See what happens. We still tip, we have a month with him or three three weeks left with. Yeah. Him. So let's so just, we need let's to, get it out. Yeah. But I mean, also, but, can you ask him? Does he think that <clears throat> he's got enough to do for full time? You know, does you know? I mean, is he looking for stuff to try to fill himself for full time I, or not? I mean, just ask him personally if he. We can ask him. I think that Tim is fine. I think that he. I, I think that we need the. It's again, you need the right person. Mm -hmm. I think Tim is the right person. He's. You never. He never He's asks busy, yeah. for something busy to do. He always finds something That's to do, and it's useful stuff. It's not just. It. I mean, yeah. it's handyman stuff, but he it's did, not. Yeah, you, he did say you, that he has seasonal like mowing is very busy in the spring. The snow removal is a lot in the winter. I have asked him to do stuff almost on a daily basis, depending on, like almost every day. I ask him to do something. Today he measured and figured out all the filing cabinet situation in the basement. And you are using the rec department. So he will be maintaining those fields, which he was yes. part of the job. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Did and, he and, and, it, and I mean, can't that be part of like, his office too? I mean, uh, it was, that was kind of his space. Yeah, that, yeah, office, that's his, yeah. that was. I mean, because if we don't have a rec director right away, is the water going to be not even water? Was, will it be shut <coughs> off for the winter or not? Or will the, rec, or the highway, you know, I mean, who's going to... Well, it seems like that's a great space for the job because there's yeah. storage. Hopefully, we have somebody before winter. That's where all his jewels are. That's yeah. Yeah. That's what yeah. 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 And yeah. He, <laughs> he made a night. I mean, it's a night. He fixed up the space and then he has lot. like kind yeah. of a Tool work, work shop, workbench. Yeah. Work yeah. 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 So, so. I guess we still have to determine whether we need more heat. I think uh, the only other question. Maybe he didn't for, think we did, but that might be him. <laughs> maybe another question for Tim is if he knows another Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Unfortunately, he has a brother, and he's going to go work with his uh, brother. Right. With his brother. Um, I make a motion to post the job description as amended tonight with a pay range of twenty twenty-five dollars an hour, based on experience, use of own tools, and use of own vehicle. Uh, okay. Second. Discussion. Um, Other than posting it on the town's website, where else would we typically do it? Uh, the newspaper. Usually, we start with the Conway Sun, and we. Carroll County Independent. Do you put it in that? No. Conway Sun, Tamworth Exchange. And then Indeed. Indeed. Do we put them on? Do we put it on Indeed? I don't think we did put that one on Indeed. Okay, so maybe we should. You did. Mm -hmm. Yep. He found it, it in the Conway Sun. That's where he found it? Huh. <coughs> I know. People do, do still read the newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think you guys should look into, like, I mean, if you're going to pay mileage, why do we have a police cruiser we've paid insurance for that has sat for yeah. two years? You yeah. know, I mean, why couldn't he have been running around with that or something? You know, I mean, that's something to look at. I like that. I mean, the fire, for the I mean, and the fire department <laughs> just decided to keep theirs for yeah. training. You know, yeah. what if they only train twice a year or something? I did look into that after you did asked. You? I emailed the yeah. uh, Jim Bowles and asked um, what their plan was with the um, SUV, and they said they were going to keep it for... Um, for training. For driving to their training. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, what if they only have training two or three times yeah. a year and it's still sitting? Is this mile is cheaper than the insurance on it? You know, you don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's just, but I mean, the it's worth looking at. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that was the same answer about the cruise, the third cruiser, the oldest one, because there had been money in, but we didn't. The money went back to the taxpayer because we didn't buy the third cruiser because we didn't have enough people to use it. Right. It sits out next to the We're road every once in a while. Maybe, so do we want to like um, in if so we get the next two the weeks and then in two weeks if we. Haven't gotten any interest. Maybe reevaluate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that sounds good. Because I think we need to try to have somebody maybe go into winter time, and that's yeah. closer than. Well, we it'd be think. great to have some overlap with Tim too, just to. Oh, that would be ideal. But I ideal think that's going to be a hard one to pull off. Yeah. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope we somebody. Only had, well, we only had three applicants. 
what, we did have three. I was thinking yes. I only had oh, ten. No, we had three. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. So we'll po that'll get posted tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay. They haven't voted yet. Oh. No. <laughs> what? And loaded. We haven't voted. Oh, yet. yeah, we got to vote. Roll call vote. Did you say yes? Fair yes. Prentice yes. Roberts yes. Four yes. Zero no. Now we'll get posted tomorrow. Awesome. That's too bad. We're losing Tim. He was hard to find right now. A single department that was self-motivated. I know. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about this. So good. And always um, went above and beyond. Yeah. All right. So, personnel committee survey. So, the personnel committee met on Tuesday, and um, we drafted a 10-question survey for all town employees, not just department heads, that we would like um, the board to approve tonight so that it can be sent out with payroll on the 9th. Is that right? Payroll, no. Payroll is this... Uh, is the second on the 16th. Yeah, it would, right, it'd be the two yeah on the 16th, and then it would, we'd get it back by the 26th. And it's um, it's a survey. You guys all see it? Yep. Yeah. It's a survey mm -hmm. just checking in with people about parts of the personnel policy so that we get their own, their feedback from it. And then we'll use these results. It can be anonymous. People can sign it if they want to, but it can be anonymous. We're going to structure it so that they can return it without having to um, have their name attached. Have to their it. name attached to it, or have the department head see it. Um, so this will be the next step in continuing to tweak. Did I miss anything else, Kelly, that we said we're going to do with it? No. Yeah, we'll send them out with a plain white envelope, and they can fill it out, and then return it either to this office here or to their department head in a Manila envelope. So again. There's no names attached. Um, we're pretty much just looking for ideas and input. Um, don't get the wrong impression. Um, there's no attachments. There's been nothing changed, deleted, added. Um, that we're still in the very beginning stages. But as the workers of our town, um, we would just like some honest feedback on on. Uh, how you feel about your job and so forth. And part Kelly Ryan's Ryan's is my name. Yeah. Uh, because what we're finding is we're looking at our policy compared to surrounding towns <clears throat> is some of it's very similar and some of it's very, very different. And so we, before we either leave things the way they are or make changes, we want input from the people that it's most directly impacting. So, um, so I think we just, I mean, I don't know, do we just need a, do we need a vote from the board to have permission to send something out to town employees? That's why we're, that's why we're bringing it up right now. It's, that's why we sent it to you. Uh, and there may be more surveys in the future. Like I said, this is just the per, So it's the personnel committee survey? Yeah. Yeah. I make a motion to send out the personnel committee survey to all town employees um, on the next, or on the... 16th, 16th of September with payroll. Second. Roll call vote. You said yes. Very yes. Prentice yes. Roberts yes. Four yes. Zero no. Okay. So How many employees out. are there? That's question. We need the exact number. It's around 30, but I don't know the exact yeah. number. Is it that? It's not that many, is it? It's around 11. You have 11? Around 11 now. Oh, I was counting the part timers. and. Yeah, because it should go to everybody. Well, part-timers or per diems on the highway? Everybody. And you get your part-time pay for volunteers and paid. Oh, you five men and now employees. So that would put you probably up 60, 70. Well, that's a good question about the fire department. They're part-time paid yeah. employees, so. Yeah. So it would be 60 or 70. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That just changed, didn't it? Mm -hmm. July 1st. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. So are they going to go out, are we sending them out to everybody, including the... I think if they fit, volunteer. if they fit a definition of, a, of an employee in our personnel policy, then they need to get one. Okay. And if now the 
Well, well the fire department. department's not even listed in your personnel policy, and you didn't hire the fire department. The fire wards hired the fire department, but yet you're paying them through your payroll system. So that creates a very muddy water of yeah. whether they're employees or they're not employees. Because the do they department. follow under all the town employee things because they're now paid paid employees? Or they're now they yeah, hourly paid employees, mm -hmm. right? Which I believe under well, they can law send it that they have to follow any policies and procedures you have. The fire chief has a written contract provided by the fire department, so he has caveats in there of what he has to follow through right. the town policies and caveats of what he doesn't have to follow. So I don't know that that was done for your paid volunteer, paid fireman. So does the personnel policy apply to the fire department employees? Good question. If they are paid employees, they we're, fall under all your employee them. stuff unless so they've all can, been issued independent contracts. We can send it out to them and then if we can see what we get back, I guess. And we should ask the attorney sure what that status is and mm -hmm. how we're supposed yeah. to handle that status with our policies. Mm -hmm. And maybe ask the fire awards. Because we're not directly are gonna, dealing with the... Are they going to the, follow these, the policy? With well, that's what I said. Well, I mean, once we hear back from the attorney what how to handle it, then we have to say to them... Yeah, the fire chief, yeah. he has a written contract provided by the... Sorry, I mean... Uh, by the um, fire awards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They okay. didn't... My understanding from listening to conversations, they did not do that with their paid part-time employees. So they are being paid through your payroll system. Mm -hmm. So therefore... You need to find out if they're town paid employees mm -hmm. or the fire wards are going to issue the, each of them contracts. I thought, well, this is way off topic. Let's save this for. I thought it was a different, it was a shift in the stipend that they'd always gotten stipends, but they're getting it stipend now. Stipend employees or volunteers? Yeah, now they they're could, hourly. Now they're hourly paid employees. Oh, okay. yeah. That's the big difference. <laughs> yeah. Which we tried to address before they went down that route. Okay. That's a little complicated. So, is there? It's going up to the employees. Um, is there anything else for that? Nope. And then we'll, we'll get back the results and compile it as part of our meeting on the whenever our next meeting is. That we just noticed the twenty sixth. But just for a clarification, twenty seventh. To the best of my knowledge, you can say yes or no. You can ignore me. It's Becky Mason. Um, the only contracted employee in this town that I am aware of that has a written contract, not an offer letter, a written contract, is the fire chief. The fire wards have written him mm -hmm. up a contractual contract. Mm -hmm. okay. Everyone else is an at-will employee that receives an offer letter. And Unless you have changed that. So if you're talking, you have to be careful when you're talking contracted employees because you don't have contracts with your employees. You have two elected... I don't think we said contracted. We're just saying town employees. Okay, because you have two elected officials, even though they're paid through your employee right. system. You have one contracted employee, which is the fire chief, and everybody else is a offer letter employee right. I free, think will, we are, we are, free will. Our, our interest is setting this out to anyone who's, who is an employee of the town who in any way has um, anything to do with our personnel policy. No, no, I understand that, but I'm saying sometimes you, when you talk about Tim, you talk about job description and contract. They don't have contracts. Oh, they have oh, okay, offer okay. letters yeah. they're at will. because okay. they're okay. at-will employees unless you write them a formal contract and have it signed okay. and renegotiated. So the only one I know that has that is the fire chief, which the fire wards renegotiate every year. Right. Thank you. Um, on to the administrator report. Okay, the account balance is $4,032,259. And uh, the projects I've been working on this week, still spending some time on deeded property, tax deeded properties, um, still working on the town emails. Those are coming along. They're being set up now. Probably they'll be available in a week or two. Um, been working on the maintenance job description and talking with Tim. And then the, the big thing that's coming up, um, which Mel started actually, was the update, is the vault storage. Um, building the new shelving in the, the vault. They're going to be coming on uh, September 12th. And basically the way the schedule works, Monday is load out. 
Um, Tuesday and Wednesday are building the shelves, the shelving system. Thursday and Friday are loading the files back in. So this room will be unavailable that week. Um, I've notified people who are having meetings um, and it got posted on the website. Did that get posted? It got posted that the building was going to be under renovations and not there wasn't any use of this room. I can add that if you'd like. Yeah, please do. So I know that the CIP and the if they spoke to both of them, moved. they've moved. Yeah, conservation and, um, and economic development that week. And slide. And well, slide. yes. Well, that was the next. <laughs> yeah. That was the next discussion. So, do you want to move the location of the meeting, or what do you all want to do? I think we have to. If it's not going to be, well, well, we can't. You could cancel. That's option two. I guess it depends on how the agenda looks. If the what agenda was that? really thin, we could cancel it. If not, we yeah. could move it. What yeah. week is this? Uh, September 15th, the week of the, the, week of the 12th. The, the week of elections. <laughs> yeah. Good point. <laughs> yeah. So we move it to... Townhouse. I think that's is it available? Deal. Yep. Yeah, I think we just move it to the townhouse. That's not a... Usually we set up a nice white table. Or two. Yeah. Okay. Fly by there so the owl can come. Bring the owl can come. Bring the owl. <laughs> Fly right over. And yeah, do we I need think, a motion? I think that? it's going to be well, over there quite a bit because we're going to need it for the 13th because we've moved this sewer commission meeting up and moved it down there. Oh. Planning board public hearing on the 14th wants mm -hmm. it. Yep. I suppose we could leave it down there for. <laughs> So but I mean, is um, somebody going to ask conservation and economic development if they're going to have their meetings there too? Yes, somebody will. <laughs> we also need the projector that's in the vault. The projector? Okay. For what? Um, Sheldon wants it for um, the public hearing. What is the date? 17th. The 12th to the 16th. 12th through the 16th that week. So that's happening. Um, that's exciting. Yeah, it is. Uh, and Tim was here working. We went down to the basement. There's a lot of files that are will be well served to be put in the leftover filing cabinets that will be brought into here and then emptied. So the company, I think, will move them down to the basement. They said they would try to. Um, and then that will be a longer term project to get the basement sort of sorted. Yeah. There's a cardboard box down there that sits on top of, right as you enter the doorway onto the right hand side, there's a cardboard pop box that has a sticky on it that says sewer system. Mm -hmm. Could we make sure that doesn't disappear, disappear or gets put someplace safe until they're done moving around in the basement? Because that's, that's all the original stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. That never, and I know you had a box in there. I actually have a file cabinet at home, sitting at home waiting to come over here to put all the sewer commission stuff in. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, after the meeting, if you want, I'll go down and get it and just bring it. So I'm sure I'll even take it home to keep it safe at this point. I just don't want to lose it because it's bad enough to try yeah, to it's, find it's the information. Okay, to down there. Yeah. okay, well, then I'll go see if I can find it after the meeting if you let me down or I'll come over tomorrow. Okay, that's it. That's it? Yeah. On to the signature file. <clears throat> I make a motion to approve the Selectman's meeting minutes for August 25th, 2022. Second. Roll call vote. Did you say yes? Very yes. Just yes. Roberts abstains. Uh, I think to say you have to Actually, abstain. Actually, my vote, I'll abstain, abstain as well. I'll okay. So we can't approve those minutes, we'll have to approve week. them next week. Okay. Um, so I rescind my motion. Um, I make a motion to approve the intent to cut for map 410, lot, 20, lot 124. Second. Roll call vote. Did you say yes? Very yes. Curtis, yes. Roberts, yes. Four yes, zero no. Emery, does that have an access on an access road they're using? It does not. Do we normally put the access road? No, on the, on the intent to cut, it says access road. The reason I'm asking is I saw somebody cutting on 113 that curves around by the Catholic Church and stuff. And I uh, well, that's coming. I think that's the same. That lot runs from 113 to Page Hill. 
Okay, because um, they're just coming up from the bottom instead of the top. Because the same, they have a sign up at the top that says, like, so the, two the name of the company. Middle, and okay. I'm pretty sure that, because it was the same name on the excavator that it was on the sign up okay. on page I was just surprised today when I went by because it hadn't been there last week, and all of a sudden it's bare and they've got logs in there, and I just mm. wondered what the access road was. Yeah, so they dropped the equipment on Page Hill, but I'm not sure okay. if it's 113 or Page Hill. Because sometimes when they put in their intent to cut, it says where they're accessing the yes. cut line from on the application. That's all I was asking. Is that... I can find out Is that that, that map? One. I just wondered if it was this one. No. I don't I mean, think it would They put their map in a lot, and then it says access. Like one, says, one says one said Page now. Hill, or one says it's two or three lines down. <coughs> on the intent right. to cut. Oh, it's a, a Hill Road. Thank you. <laughs> so yes, acreage is ten acres. acres so that's the one you're proving tonight. Yes. Okay, so they did because they put a landing in there. That's why I asked. I hadn't seen that last week. Yeah. Page. <coughs> Which? <coughs> well, they're well, they. The landing's on the bottom. No, no, they put the landing up on top. He said they're meeting down to the bottom. Yeah, because they dropped the equipment on Page Hill. Right. I did see there was an excavator in 113, though, so. Yeah. I'm not sure which. All right. Thank um, you. Did we vote on that? No. Did we vote on that? No. We don't have the intent to cut. Or do we do the. We did that. We did the intent to cut. We did the intent to yeah. cut. Yeah. I make a motion to appro approve the driveway application. Permit for map 212, lot 21. Is it sublot 6? Mm -hmm. Yes, sublot 6. Second. Um, any discussion? Roll call vote. Just say yes. Barry yes. Francis yes. Roberts yes. Um, 4 yes, 0 no. Um, I make a motion to. Approve the account payable in the amount of two hundred eighty-six thousand one hundred fifty dollars and sixty-one cents. Second. Any discussion and questions? Hearing none. Roll call vote. Do you say yes? Barry yes. Francis yes. Roberts yes. Four yes. Zero no. I make a motion to approve payroll in the amount of thirty-four thousand three hundred seventy-six dollars and two cents. Second. Roll call vote. Do you say yes? Barry, yes. Prentice, yes. Roberts, yes. Four, yes. Zero, no. The year to date is five million six hundred ten thousand nine hundred ninety-eight dollars and thirty-three cents. Selectman's update. Richard. Uh, Tuesday went to the Eversource meeting at the library. They're doing uh, uh, work on the power lines from uh, through three towns, and it ends here in Tamworth. The schedule is looking like construction of the third quarter of next year. Um, and there's a, I have a phone number and an email address if anybody wants information about it. There seemed to be little interest in the meeting because it was Eversource and their consultants and me. Nobody else was there. Uh, they notify the landowners that it goes yep. through anyways. Yep. No. Um, uh, some of the property is owned by Eversource. The rest is on easements and they've communicated with all the landowners. And I did ask them for uh, updates as we get closer uh, before construction starts. So that's it. Any update, Carl? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I went to any meetings this week, so I have nothing to report. Leah? Uh, we had personnel meeting, personnel um, policy meeting on Tuesday, as I said. Um, and we created the survey. And then I talked to Jamie about um, getting answers to the follow-up questions from last Thursday's meeting uh, for soccer. And that was that. Oh, uh, CIP. I couldn't go to the CIP meeting, but the um, CIP finished their final report, and it's ready to go to hearings. Um, Made a bunch of changes. It's it's a pretty intense process. I'm trying to figure out how to spread those big tickets out. But um, some different block grant money came in unexpectedly, which is going to take chunks out. 
and um, and the state also changed um, how we can use the rest of the ARPA funds. So some of that money that's not already been designated for projects can get used on almost anything that we designate it to be used for. So that can also take out some big chunks of next year's um, big capital projects. Did you? When do we see that, the report? It's up. It's, up. They, it's posted so you can look at it. And then um, the hearing's on the 14th. That's one of the hearings that uh, Sheldon was talking about. Um, right. Richard. Talk to Richard today. Do you talk to that Scott? Yep. Okay. That's all I've got then. Um, yeah, don't steal my after. I'm not going to steal your. <laughs> so I talked to Richard Roberts today. And um, the Scott Road Bridge. Um, he just let me know that what their plan is um, when they the guardrails that will have to be put on the Scott Road Bridge will probably cost around sixty to seventy thousand um, dollars, which he thought was pretty absurd. Um, so what his thought is, and what Bruce Knox thought was that the uh, guardrails that came off of the Bunker, Bunker Hill, Hill Bridge. Mm -hmm could be used there, um, which would save a lot of money. And if they can't be used, what he'd like to do is put um, some of the big yard blocks, which are there now temporarily, for the next year or two, um, to see if maybe there's the prices go the other way in the future, in the next year or two. And if they don't, then maybe we decide down the road a little bit, it would spread out some of the cost, and maybe we decide at that point that we just have to suck it up and get the very expensive guardrails. Yeah. So I thought that that was kind of a good idea. Um, it'll take off a little bit of the, I mean ideally that we can use the guardrails that came off the Bunker Hill Bridge. If not, we'll, you, I mean, and like he said, it's not a highly traveled road. Um, so he felt that it was, the yard blocks would be sufficient for a period of time. Um, to see if the any of the costs go the other way. So, um, anyway, that's pretty much all I have. So, is there any public input? Yes? I just wanted to let everybody know I sent Keita a late email that the tax maps are on the main web page now oh, yeah. with the overlays and everything, and I let the committees know that use them as a general rule and yeah. spread the word. The CIP and the Groundwater Protection Ordinance drafts are posted with every, all eight places that the <laughs> notices are, so you're welcome to download it. You can click on the town calendar under the meeting and get it. You can click on the planning board. You can click under the public hearing. Um, I let Keith know so that you guys know. Um, I've sent out test messages to you guys from contact. New Hampshire, because if you go on the main webpage under Board of Selectmen and I hit on your name, a contact form comes up, and it automatically sends to your emails, and I've sent out tests, because people can actually contact individual selectmen that way. Hmm. I've never received a response back, so what I'm putting in your head one. now is I'm going to send out an email tomorrow to each one of you, and it says contact Tamworth is how it comes into your mm -hmm. email box. Could you please respond so I know whether your emails are working or not, so people can. See, so I've never. I've not got one yet. I've sometimes when I when I first started getting them because they do come into my email, they looked a little funky, like I wasn't sure if right. I could click they on it. Strange, so, but so just expect it to look. But I'm going to warn you now. I'm sending it out tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So if it comes yeah. in, please send me back that you received it. I think so I've I gotten those from people in the past because they'll say like "Hi, E. Roberts." Yes. And yeah, it looks and like it's not an email. It looks like a phishing email. It doesn't look like an email that you want, but it is a contact form yeah. that goes yeah. to our system. Okay. Um, so the second thing is. Wait, what's the sender? What does the sender say? It just says contact form, and then they type in their message. It just says contact for contact. So who does it manager. come from? Directly from them? Yes. Oh, okay. So it's just a form fill. Oh, okay. Basically, it's a form okay. fill. Um, I told Keats that as a rule, I'm posting now, so stuff automatically comes down for news announcements, so I don't have to go back in and go, I'll take that down. So everything that you do the day after, like the 
trailer one will disappear tomorrow because the trailer bids were due in today. So if you see stuff disappearing going, how did that do? That's why. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I've spoken with Emily. We're going to try and update that. But I've also spoken to Keats about if the board gives permission. I know Keats has said it, uh, possibly yes. Our website was set up many years ago, and it's quaint. <laughs> Other towns have websites that look like a municipal website. Mm -hmm. So I contacted the company to see if we could switch over. We can't. It's actually, they have to build it again. Because there are certain tabs that I can't do anything with. You have to go to the company and they mm -hmm. have to straighten them out. Um, I was willing to contact the company sales department and see what it would be to set up a municipal looking page for the budget next year if you would like me to proceed with that. To see what the cost would be. Doesn't hurt to find out what the cost yeah. is. I mean, it would look like, if you want to see what it would look like, it would look like Cal County's homepage, town of Ossipi, town of, uh, I was trying to think, is it, it Moultonboro or, or Meredith that we pulled up the other day? It, it's cleaner. It looks a lot cleaner. It's, mm -hmm. it's brighter colors mm -hmm. for us old people that can't see dark and white <laughs> anymore and stuff like that. Yep. So. Sure, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Is there any other public input? Yes? One um, Right before the meeting, I went home, and there's a tree down on Bunker Hill if you want to call Richard. Oh, really? Where about It's at the bottom of the hill, on this side, on the bottom of the hill. Is it? Uh, I could drive around it, okay. but I mean, like, well, if you meet somebody like tonight, you probably will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know it's there because I've already been by it. But, okay. Yeah. Um, and when will you open the bids on the trailer? I was just going to say, before we go into that, I felt like um, one of the added agenda items was the trailer oh, yeah. discussion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There were no, there was um, one bid, the bids were due yesterday, and there was one bid submitted, received this morning. Um, other than that, there were no bids. And when did the bidding close? Yesterday. Yeah. So, so, received, so I checked with the attorney just to make sure that we were, you know, operating in the right way, and they suggested we not accept it because that could be challenged because it's after the mm -hmm. closing time. So okay. we reopen the bidding process. Well, actually, um, uh, the property owner on the that the trailer sits yeah. on would like to. Um, Take ownership. He has interest in the trailer. He has interest in oh. the trailer. <laughs> Which until this point he didn't, but now he does. So. <laughs> well, that's one of our options, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And in fact, given how difficult that trailer would be to move. And I don't, I think the only way it can be moved is to cut trees. Yeah, I just so saw that So if the today, property actually. owner tells us he doesn't want trees cut, <laughs> and I don't think we have, I don't think we can just helicopter cut it. his trees. Yeah. Wow. So... <laughs> Well, so we didn't get any. We didn't get a bid in the legitimate time period. The property owner would like to keep it. Mm -hmm. Property owner, keep it. Start paying taxes on it again. That'd be great. Yes. I have one other question. Uh, we tried this. I don't think you were on the board yet. We tried to get the intersection up here straightened out with the state. In the past week, coming over here, I've developed more gray hair than I normally have because I've been behind three individuals that barely missed being T-boned in that intersection. So I took a ride down tonight to make sure I wasn't crazy. And all there is is an arrow that with a, you know, the yeah. hard 90 mm -hmm. degree that says 20 miles an hour with flashing light. Could we please petition the state or talk to one of our representatives and ask them if we can get a dangerous intersection sign up there that instead of just the right angle sign saying it's a dangerous, I, I don't know what else to do. I don't think anybody will pay than, more attention to that than they do the one that's going to make it a full way stop. Least, well, they stop. won't do that. We've already gone down that path. Well, that so they refuse it. to so make which it. Which intersection are you doing? The one right at the top of the hill here by the monument. That'd be a nice place for a roundabout. Saturdays are a nightmare. But I think yeah, try, yeah. try Saturdays yeah. during the if you're not a farmer's market. If the, I would sell it as if the state says it's a dangerous intersection and somebody's yeah. going more than 20 miles an hour and they get T-boned, at least the insurance companies have something to work off of that you were warned it was a dangerous intersection. 
Uh, but just the right angle doesn't doesn't yeah. cut it. Just, sometimes you can get away with it, but the traffic has been so. I mean, one van with two kids in it. I thought to God we were going to have a mess on our hands because. Well, and I'll tell you the, the two conversations going on. Really, it's going straight through it, but I could. Yeah. They're, they're not going 20 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, there's too many people talking at once. Thank you. Um, I mean, it would be contacting either our state representative, DOT. I don't think you can contact the local office to see if they would put it up, but just the angle. They're not going to slow down. I know that. But at least it gives somebody an idea that I don't. I think we should have it posted on all four, all three. Entrance is there that it's a dangerous intersection because somebody flew off of uh, 113B up through the other day and I'm going, uh, stop sign, you know? That's, it's it's getting scary on this corner. What was the rationale for not making it a four-way stop? The sight, sight line. There was plenty of sight line to see everybody and stuff. And well, coming up from that, okay. no, the sight lines are not okay. enough. If you come up from like the road from the school, there wasn't enough. You have to get to the top of the hill. And then for cars stopping, it was it just didn't work. Sight line out. to come over that little knoll. You didn't yeah. have enough time to put a stop light like there to have them to stop because of the I little knoll, and it was too much. Too I much cost. The engineering, they were going to bring that intersection down. That, several that feet. we got told that wasn't even a possibility yeah. anymore. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. yeah, they were going to lower it like. Or something. Yeah, because it's just Everybody that little knoll, and they fly up over it. And by the time they see somebody in that intersection, it's all hands on deck where they're sliding to to get out of it. I mean, uh, Saturday when the farmers markets, I don't know how people haven't gotten run over. It's it's really bad on a Saturday. But a thought that yes, it may not serve any better, and they may not slow down, but at least it's. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. <clears throat> um, just to go back to the sale of the mobile home for a second, I think we need a motion if that's. Oh. Mm -hmm. To be the decision. So, well, but didn't, you, didn't you just say that the person who owns the land is not the person who owns the trailer? Yeah, the person who owns the land is not the person who. We own the trailer. Yes. The town owns the trailer. But we're, but we're not giving. If we gave it back to the prop to the property owner, you're saying give it back to the previous owner. No, no. The property, the property owner approached me and said he would like to take it's it. It's not his property, though. Is what Emery's saying. No, what? it is. What you, well, it's the land owner. The land owner. The land owner. Yeah. Land owner. Yes, yeah. yes, the yeah. land owner is interested in the trailer. Well, then, I was just saying the trailer. Have on it. Do we? What's that? Land owner should have bid on it. That's right. Well, yes. okay. Here we are, though. Maybe we reopen the bid, and maybe we'll get two next time. I think you have to because well, the landowner doesn't own that trailer. No. Well, I no, think that well, the, the, no, the town owns the it. The town owns the trailer, right. and according to the attorney, you, the select board has the right to dispose of this trailer in the way that you see is the you know the right way to do mm -hmm. it. You have you can choose to open a bid. You can choose to sell it to the property owner for any amount you So have. how much are we out? Was it the bid? How much are we out? out? Yes. Well, you know, the past taxes didn't get paid. Isn't right. that why we own it? Yes. Yeah. So we still owed? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. go ahead. Can I, the, the, the trailer was, let's say it was a couple. Yeah. The wife Owned. No, 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 not well, married. Well, they weren't married. The partner. The partner owned the trailer. Yeah. And left it. Yeah. On the, the other partner's, the other partner's, the other partner's land. land. The, the town took it for taxes. Technically, the property owner could be billing the town, could be billing the town for storage of that trailer. Mm -hmm. And they didn't for a lot of years. And, and the and the property the trailer owner was asked the proper way when we did the um, the auction and all of that and the auction company said give it away. Yeah. That was their answer. And you can't move it really. No. So, no. so the landowner no. is not the person who owed the taxes. No. Who owed the taxes? Sell no. it for a dollar. Right. That's right. Yeah. And then the town's not getting any tax dollars back. No, we'd be getting tax if he owns it. We'd be getting tax on it the would trailer. We wouldn't be getting what it we're owed. It'll go on to the tax rolls now. But he's not going to have to pay back. It her, wasn't his. Her back taxes. No. No. But I mean, when like when we had the auction, auction, they the people that bought it had to pay those back. Taxes. Right. So yes, but then he he could have could been refuse, charging the town for a long time. Yes, and he could also <laughs> refuse because 
it's in a pretty tight spot to get a trailer out, and we're not positive that it's we. we I, movable. It looks movable. Like when I looked at the frame and stuff, I think it's possible, but it's very challenging. Challenging. So if somebody does buy it for the thousand or whatever, they would have thousands and moving. Well, and he yeah. might say, "You can't t cut my, down my trees." Yeah, yeah and there's a septic on one side and a well on the other. Did I think giving it away is your open? best bet? What's that? Was the late bid open? No. No. Was the what? Late, late bid open. open. No, you, you have to open them in public here if you've been open. Yeah. No. Okay. I open it. So we're going to lose money on it, but it's better to get rid of it. And you can and start charging taxes on it going forward, right? which yes. is better than where we are now. Was yeah. that bid hand-delivered? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, the reason so I'm asking is because they'll go postmark. with the postal sure. mark, and if it got in here before the deadline, oh, yeah. then... Yeah. My wife got a letter yesterday, postmarked July 6th. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> well, that's why I asked if it was hand-delivered, because yeah. otherwise they'll go, you don't want somebody challenging you saying, I got a bid in right. here, and you didn't well, you accept think you it. Well, should so. <laughs> I do too. I make a motion to sell the trailer to the owner of the land on which the trailer sits for one dollar. Second. Discussion. Wouldn't it be better to seek an offer, or am I being greedy? No, I. I, I haven't seen the trailer. <laughs> but he did. I think he charged rent. So. But he didn't. That's behind us now. Is he going to charge us retroactive rent? I don't know if he could. No, he yeah, can't. I don't so believe good. he can do that unless he got a lawyer and maybe they haggled it out. I see where you're coming from. Normally I would take that position, but this trailer... How long? How many years has it been? Do we know how many years? 2016. I'm looking around the, yeah. 2016 since it's been on tax roll. Mm. I, yeah. If it I makes know, the problem I, go away, then there's yeah. value. I, yeah. Yeah. And we will be getting tax dollars in the future from it. We will lose out from 2016 until now, which is not... I see where you're coming from. I don't know. My decision, I guess, will be maybe different, but... I think if Emery's not going for the money, it's telling us that the... <laughs> and I say that with all due respect, that, that it's, yeah. there's not the money to be had in it. And I thought... I was kind of hoping somebody would bid on it, and then they couldn't move it, and then we'd maybe get to keep that money and still sell it again, but that didn't work out either. So, <laughs> Good thing of it. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, is there any other discussion or questions? Uh, roll call vote. You say yes. Barry, yes. Prentice, yes. Roberts, yes. Um, four, yes. Zero, no. So now we need to contact the landowner and see if he would hopefully... Cough up a dollar. Cough up a dollar. a dollar over. He rejects. Question so. more to write the deed and The purchase and sale, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Any other public? Salary mm -hmm. change budget process you added to the agenda mm -hmm. that we didn't talk about? I do have one item to add that I yes. should have put in my uh, selectman's update. Uh, for those who are on the sandwich board, months ago there was a lot of kerfuffle, I guess is the word, about uh, the power company utilization of herbicides in sandwich. There was a lot of confusion, misinformation in my opinion, and upset about use of herbicides. So I asked the Eversource people what, even though this is a construction project, not a maintenance of stump sprout projects, which is what the herbicides are used for, is if, if they were aware of that and how they deal with that on their projects, could that be a problem here? And they said, well, that was a different power company. Eversource does not use herbicides. They, they Mo. physically cut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted people to be aware of that because that was the only issue that I can think of that the public really would be interested in because this is really a pole replacement project. Mm -hmm. um, so I think Moe has its own issues, but at least you know, they'll be, Eversource tells me they do not use herbicides, so I wanted to share that. That's good. Is there any other public input? I just wanted to know, do we know if they're going to resubmit that grant from the arts project? The arts well, can't now. Okay, it's, 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 it's yeah. over. Okay, thank you. Is there any? Yes, Linda. Talking about spray stuff, I'm, what was sprayed on Bunker Hill in front of like the community school? On mm -hmm. the dirt? Is it by the town? I guess, I don't know who I think it's liquid calcium, yeah. isn't it? And they've used that in the past in bad, dusty areas, I think. I can ask Richard, though. But I believe he uses some liquid calcium in the summer. Yeah, I asked him if it was calcium, and he said it's something. It's something. It's something else. But 
It does the same thing. Okay. It takes Maybe the moisture out of the air. Yeah. But is it, I mean, was it, is it safe for like all the kids that were there, the farm Live animals, stock, and the garden? He said, he said it, that's it's not, that's, not, not that's, toxic. Because I mean, you can see where it travels yeah. out too, like onto the pavement. Yeah. So it was sprayed quite heavily. I just didn't know what it was used. <clears throat> yeah. I, I can ask Richard that. I can't remember the name of the product. Yeah. I was thinking it was liquid calcium, but I think you're right in saying it's not, because I think we had asked him this question in here before. You just talking about spray and stuff, and I just wondered what it was. I mean, they had corn right close and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Too bad we can't go to the back of the days of spraying oil on the roads, huh? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> all my t-shirts when I was a kid had that from riding your bike, they right up your spine, you all had oil spots on your t-shirts. <laughs> the good old days. Old crankcase oil. Uh, um, any other public input? Wasn't there something else that was added to the agenda? Keats, yeah, oh. it was the second thing Keats had added, salary change to the budget process. Uh-huh. Right, so... Um, there's multiple ways of doing it. Um, one of the ways that the board did it last year, which seems very sensible, is to survey other department of the towns around us um, and see what they're paying on other departments. There's been so much inflation, there's probably been some changes. And um, so that's a discussion you all have to have. I can go over other ways of approaching um, how to put salary changes in the budget. When we went through the, I'm gonna ask since Becky and Melanie here. When we went through this process last year, I remember we uh, contacted the other towns and kind of got like an average for positions. The department has contacted all the other department. heads. What we did was we took each position because for years it had been colas or events, a director coming in mid year saying, So and so is so far out of whack, I need to bring them up to this. Can we do it? And we would try to find the money and do it. So last year the idea was we would ask the department heads to contact at least six or more towns for each position they had and give us what they were. So then Keats has got the paperwork. I collated them all, came up with an average cost that everybody was earning, depending on, I mean, they, Moulton Borough has high payments that they make. So we averaged it out and we looked at each department's role, position, and said, where do they fall compared to the median? We bump, we kept them all around the medium pay in the area, not high, not low, because no offense, it was the first year and that we were already looking at a substantially mm -hmm. increased budget of 16% at that point before mm -hmm. personal cost. And so we brought people up. So some people got, because they'd been brought up through the year, only got a 2% mm -hmm. quote increase. Other people got a 7% increase. A lot of part-timers had to, I mean, we were paying truck drivers something like $13 an hour to plow for winter snowstorms, so we bumped them yeah. quite considerably yeah. to yep. keep competitive. Mm -hmm. So that's how we did it last year. We did each individual department. So we couldn't say everybody got a 2% cola right. across the board. It was individual. The worksheets were there so people could see them if they really had a question. The other way is you do a across the board COLA, which our previous town administrator figured out a two, two and a half, and three percent COLA, what it would cost across the board for every position. Mm -hmm. That was when inflation was that really Well, the problem, the problem was, is, as I said, and I'll tell you, uh, everybody said they were going to get a six percent last year, and because Medicare got a six percent pay increase. And as I said to them, even at the highest rate that you can get paid by Medicare, that equaled ninety dollars extra a month. Mm -hmm. But then Medicare turned around and raised the premium, raised the premium. from one forty to one seventy. So nobody made any money on their first cola since nineteen sixty three of six percent. Yeah. So that's why we opted to go the individual because as you said, inflation's changed, prices have changed this and people move around mm -hmm. from town to town Lots based on what they pay. So that's right. why we went each individual department. I didn't know it was that high. Was it, what was the 8.1% today? It, yeah. But last year, wasn't it close six. to 7? 6. I think six. it's a little lower, yeah. 6% okay. was the co cost of Medicare. We, we always looked at, previous to that, we always looked at what the COLA was around for Medicare yeah. and the general COLA. The reason being is because mm -hmm. we have a very old old society in Tamworth. And if 
Your people, money. main taxpayers, aren't getting more than a 2%, and you're trying to explain why you're giving a 9% to your employees. Yeah. It doesn't work real well, and that's, I, that's I the hard we, game. Yeah. I think we also need to... It's, it's a tough one, in my opinion, because the cost of everything is going up. So, you know, the people that are living off of Social Security and everything else are going to struggle, and yeah. the tax increase isn't going to help. But with that being said, we also... You know, we've got a lot of good employees in town. There's other, you know, there's going to be other towns that are going to probably jump up. And they're looking for, other towns are looking for help. For employees, yeah. So, you know, if somebody, you know, maybe at $2 more, they're not going to leave. They'll stay where they're at. But then you start talking 4 or 5 or $6 more an hour, and then you risk losing employees. Um, Which, like last year, they can't get even, though. Yeah. I mean, you know, average. Right? So maybe we could look at the average and then decide, do we go up a percentage or do we, yeah. you know, I think yeah. it's a... At least I, just get the data. Yeah. Get the data, right. I think, get the I data think the main and part is you see, see what people are paying yeah. around you. You may be off again. We may have only gotten up to the museum and other people may have adjusted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the so can we part. use that same system that was yeah. used last year? I yeah. think that's that the most... I send an email out to all the department heads. Yeah, let them do that. At least to get that data and see where we're at and then we can decide from there what we do. I'm surprised you went to six towns, though. Oh, yeah. some had nine towns, some had ten towns. Wow. We wow. asked a minimum of six. Yeah. Um, but, but the hot pad is, is you, this older generation mm. around in this town, yeah. how much more can they afford of their taxes before yeah. they, they can't buy groceries or eat their well, house? They don't pay their taxes and nobody gets paid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I don't know, it's... Scary, it's scary times. Well, right you'll now. know after this year's budget, because this, this coming year's budget, when you set the tax rate in December, had a 20% increase. 21%, right? 20.24% oh, increase. Yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah, I anticipate... Uh, December bills are going to Probably be. more applications for assistance. Well, the December bills will show a high reflect, because this budget increased so much. Compared, most years it was kept at a 6 to 7% last year. Yeah, because the June year. bill is just an estimate of last year's. As half of the last, previous year's taxes. Yeah. That comes um, the hottest time of year for a lot of people. Yeah. Especially people that don't have their oil barrels. So. Well, and the other problem is, is nobody's quoting out prices beyond six months. Oil's being priced out right now on a daily basis. The rack rate's a daily basis. You can't, if you call up and say, I want oil today, they'll tell you, fine, we can deliver tomorrow, but we can't tell you what the price is going to be because we don't know what the price is going to be tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I think, so I think we need to do some thinking on that, but I think maybe a good place to start would be finding the mm -hmm. data from the surrounding towns, and then we can kind of go from there. Um, I just know a lot, of, a lot of areas are looking for help, and I think we don't want to find ourselves in that position as well. I think it's a tough one. I don't want to see us spend a lot of money if we don't have to, but at the same time, I don't want to next year be looking for three or four full-time positions when there, we only have 11 full-time people in town. And I think, too, I mean, you got to look at not just how much they get paid, but the health insurance. Yeah, yeah. Health yeah we could insurance. compare that to I other mean, if our health well. insurance is a little better than the rest of them, it may balance out. Yeah. yeah. That could be a big difference, too. Not just look at the hourly rate, but their benefits. Yeah. And maybe that's another thing that would come into the uh, personnel committee, part of the, one of the um, is not only pay, but what are we offering compared to other towns for vacation time and... Just your health insurance that's and all that. Yeah. That's the big so. ticket price. Because that's where the town has the same, the same health insurance as the school does, which is excellent health insurance. We raised the employees two years ago. They used to, the school pays 3% of their premium, which is unheard of. Unheard of. The town paid 7%, which is unheard of. Um, we raised them to 10%. The going company out in the real world, in the world is 20 to 30% with six and $7,000 deductibles. Right. The deductibles here are only 3,000, 5,000 for a family. And to offset that, when we raised the percentage they had to pay, we gave them flexible spending accounts. So an individual gets a 500, a uh, two-person gets a 1500, and a family gets a, a two-person gets a thousand, and a family gets a 1500 plan. So if something is not covered by their health insurance, they can pull out of the flexible spending account provided for by the town mm -hmm. to offset that bill. So there's there's benefits to look at too. Yeah. And we can also see if other towns have changed, changed what, at all. What percentage but, you're paying? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think it's definitely a lot to look at, and this is a tough time to 
to do so because a lot of people are looking for help and there's people offering an awful lot of money, which is unfortunate. So, anyway, um, is there any other public input other than... Or not, we were not public input, but okay. is there any more public input? Hearing none, I make a motion to go into non-public under RSA 91-A, colon 3, 2C, session 1. And I'm actually going to do away with the session 2 that I asked for at the beginning of the meeting. Okay. okay. So, there's just one non-public. Second. Um, roll call vote. Just said yes. Very yes. Yes. Roberts, yes, and we are non public at eight twenty. I make motion that we come out of non public at eight thirty six PM. Second. Roll call vote. You said yes. Very yes. Prentice, yes. Roberts, yes. We are now out of non public at eight thirty six. Uh, minutes are not sealed. And Motion to adjourn. That's that. I think I said everything. You, you did. Thank you for coming in. Did everybody sign? Yep. Yes.